you better like grab a drink, grab some snacks. No, you gotta say your your line that we always say when you're not doing it. I need my vocals for this video. What up, y'all? We're doing a book haul, baby. Finally. We got a lot of books. And you better get a Look snack. At <laughs> Look at this. Look at those. We have a, a, a small pile over here off, off camera. We counted, roughly counted, 114 books. It's so much. Like, why? Why do we do this to ourselves? So you'll probably see a wardrobe change halfway through this or multiple war wardrobe changes. Which means it took multiple days to film because it's our voices are going to die, basically. It's late at night. We're going to start this, all right? So um, we're also going to be uh, announcing the winner for this book, which we talked about during the last book haul, y'all. Um, and, uh, and then we got a new book that we're going to do a giveaway for. So if you want to skip to the end, feel free. If you want to hang out with us for Another who knows how long, <laughs> um, and just have us talk about some books and listen to us and, uh, and, and yeah, make sure to leave a comment down below, letting us know if you want us to continue to do these super long form um, well, book no, calls. We, we probably won't do another yeah. one this big. We tried. Last time we said the same thing. We were like, we're not going to do this anymore. Let's not do this to ourselves. We're going to do it once a month. It was like 60 books. Yeah. We literally doubled up. Yeah. Our goal is to do a book haul now once a month, which means a giveaway once a month, um, which is better because everyone gets more free stuff. Yeah. But. Let's start. That's our goal. Let's start. We're already like, right. we're already like three minutes in. Let's just get going. I got sent this final copy of How Rory Thorne Destroyed the Multiverse by Kay Eason. I think this cover is so freaking cool. It's and nice. I, don't know I, why. I really like it. I like how busy it is. Book one of the Thorne Chronicles. Nice. It's kind of a... Uh, are you normal. doing like... Are you reading stuff? I usually do. All right. Rory Thorne is a princess with 13 fairy blessings, the most important of which is to see through flattery and platitudes. As the eldest child, she always imagined she'd inherit her father's throne and govern the interplanetary Thorn Consortium. Then her father is assassinated. Her mother gives birth to a son, and Rory is betrothed to the prince of a distant world. When she arrives in her new home, she uncovers a treacherous plot to unseat her newly betrothed and usurp his throne. Blah, blah, blah. Sounds awesome, in my opinion. I asked for this book, and they were nice enough to send it. Thank it you, my lady. It just sounds kind of like... To me, it sounds like it's set in like a different world, but maybe it's not. Who knows? I also got sent The Beautiful by Renee Adier, which is her new um, book coming out in October. I don't like the cover. Why? I like it. It looks uh, like, a, like a romance. I think there is romance in it, but it's a vampire book. Oh, okay. I see it. Night. It's set in 1872, New Orleans, and it's got vampires. I really don't want to know the plot of this one, so I'm not going to read it to you guys. If you want to know about it, you can look it up. You're a sucker for vampires. I Get love it? vampires. Get it? I hear... I've hear... I, I've heard... What have you heard? Mixed things so far, so mm. I don't know. But I've been in a very, like... Uh, Halloweeny mood and fall mood, and I It's Halloweeny it. now, so... But I didn't put this on my TBR, so... Then I got sent hashtag murder funding randomly. I didn't ask for this book. The cover is like weird. I like it. What? Oh, did you show the naked? Yeah, I did. You did. I did. Oh, look at this. No, you didn't. Oh, yeah, you did. I remember now. Dollar sign. Dollar dollar bill, y'all. <laughs> All right. Just eh, plain just a black. black book. This is cool though. The inner. That should have been the hardcover. The right? outside. That would have been nice. Hold this. Yes, ma'am. Welcome to Who Wants to Be a Paniac, the latest reality TV show on the hunt for the next big hit serial killer. But don't worry, no one's actually going to murder anyone, as real as the fake gore and pretend murder may appear. Uh, right? 17-year-old. All right, moving on. Okay. <laughs> Who knows, it may be good. 17-year-old, that's our that's our trigger, trigger, guys. Just don't don't write 17-year-old. Is it always 17-year-old? Always. Don't write 17-year-old in your synapses. Then I got sent an art copy of the Rubicus Prof Prophecy. <laughs> Prophecy. Oh, I thought that's really what it was called. No. I was like, that's a cool name. Um, it's a short little book. I believe these are middle grade. Um, this is the second book in the series. I like the cover. I, it's very like Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, it is. Like, I, I don't it. know if you guys could see it. But it actually got sent with like a really cool package with a bunch of like stuff in it. Like a candle. Um, like a, a battery candle. Like a battery whatever 
candle. L- uh, LED, like, like little... It what came are, with some Hufflepuff-like called? socks, some Harry Potter glasses. Yeah, which was weird cool. because it's not Harry Potter. And I don't really know what this is about. I don't really want to know too much. Maybe they're wizards. It says, Abigail just started her second year at T- Tarkana Witch Academy. It is up to her ears studying for horrible hexes and awful alchemy. The good news is that Kala, the former, former glitch witch, is in all of her classes. The bad news, a sign has arrived that the curse breaker is among them. This sounds like a pretty cute story and I want It's really short. It yeah, looks like I want to look up the first one and maybe get it. We're trying to go fast here. Then I got Frankly in Love by David Yoon. Oh, I, I love the 2D. Love this cover. I love the 2D 3D. Like it's just 2.3D. I love it. And awesome. I love the sprayed edges. They're like navy blue. So all first edition copies of this book have the sprayed edges, which I think is so dope that like a company is doing because like normally to get sprayed edges you have to go through like a book company like a book box um oh that's this nice. whole thing is just so freaking oh that's a beautiful cool. that's a nice contrast so there i like the yellow and the blue oh, i really don't want to know much about this all i know is that it's got crazy ridiculous hype right now everyone's loving it it's a contemporary korean american family um and i hear that Something about this guy isn't supposed to be dating anyone but Korean girls. So he and another Korean girl, I guess who's going through the same situation, decide to team up and pretend they're dating so that they can date other people. Um, but I hear it's really super cute and just really well. And then at the end, they end up falling in love. They probably yeah. What, I mean, and everybody's happy. It's contemporary. What would be even better is one, if one of them died, and then the other one got framed for murder, and then they got arrested. And then their whole plan oh my God. went down the drain. That's no, my prediction. This is not a thing. Solved the problem. Ooh, the Loki book. Ha <laughs> ha. Loki is looks very evil. So this is a um, a book written by Mackenzie Lee. Obviously, a lot of people know her for the Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue. Uh, this is, I want to say, like a origin story. No, right? I, I don't know. So it's a. It came out last month, so it is a, out now. Younger Loki. Before the days of going toe-to-toe with the Avengers, a younger Loki is desperate to prove himself heroic and capable while it seems everyone around him suspects him of inevitable villainy and depravity. Wait, let me read the next part. A 1,700-year-old Loki. I'm just Where? kidding. <laughs> uh, except for Amora. Asgard's <laughs> resident sorceress in training feels like a kindred spirit, someone who values magic and knowledge who might even see the best in him. Um... I don't know. So I feel like it is kind of like a prequel Loki story. It is, yeah. It's before he like, you know. And I like her writing quite a bit. Like she writes very kind of likable characters. And um, so far, I mean, I've only read the two Gentleman's Guide books from her, but I really enjoyed them. So I'm excited. I also got sent this book, The Darkest Time of Night by Jeremy Finley. I did not ask for this book. Um, I know that a ton of booktubers get really upset when... Uh, publishers waste money on sending unsolicited books to people. However, I've found that a lot of the times they send me stuff that I may like that I have not heard about and now I have the means to pick them up and maybe enjoy them. Or even if it's not my style of book, I like to at least show them on camera because maybe the synopsis sounds appealing to you. Just because I don't like something or I'm not interested in a synopsis doesn't mean you might not be. So that's why I show them off in case you're wondering. Oh, I almost got upset when the seven-year-old grandson of a U.S. senator banishes in the woods behind his home. The only witness is his older brother. The lights took him, he says, and never utters another word again. As the FBI and National Guard launch a massive surge, the boy's grandmother, Lynn, comes to realize that her greatest fear has come back to haunt her and her family. That sounds cool. It's like sci-fi, like yeah. that alien thing. Like, Yeah, it sounds like it. That sounds neat. I actually might read that. I've hauled this book in the past, The Sisters of Winterwood by Reno Rossner. This is, they sent me a final um, paperback copy. So, hold this. This is, in a remote village surrounded by vast forests, Libba and Leia have been uh, raised on the honeyed scent of their mommy's babka and low rumble of their tati's prayers. But when dark forces threaten their village, the sisters discover a family secret passed down through generations. Faced with a magical heritage they never knew existed, they realize the old fairy tales are true and could save them all. So it's like a fairy to- fairy tale-esque story. I still haven't read it, even though I've had it for a while. Then, like a bunch of people, um, 
as a pre-order incentive for Aurora Rising, you got Memento, which is like a little short story. Um, I want to say based on Aiden from Illuminae Files. So I got that. Surprised you haven't read this yet. It would take know, you like so tiny. 10 minutes. <laughs> I still have to read it. I, I, it's actually really nice, like the quality of it. The pages are all done like in the style of the real book and stuff. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Yeah. Like it's it's cool. It's surprisingly better. It's better than I thought it would be. Really? Because yeah, a lot of these like little prints are just like, I don't know, boring. They just like, oh, we'll put a hardcover, paper cover, card stock, and then like just some paper inside. But this one's actually like, it was produced. It seems like it was produced, you know, like nicely. It's 82 pages. And this book came out in August, Swipe Right for Murder. So it is out now. Um, I don't know anything about this book. It says, it doesn't, it's one of those ones that really doesn't give you a synopsis. It's not on the inside. It says, a hookup turned deadly, hunted by the FBI, targeted by a murderous cult, accused of cyber terrorism, cyber terrorism increasingly irritated text from friends, eye contact with a good looking guy on the train. Cybonucleic acid. <laughs> um, Aiden Jameson has a lot to deal Aiden with. Aiden again? Yeah, it's a he, conspiracy, Meek. And he's not quite sure which comes first. Uh, I Moral? like, okay, I wait. like, I like synapses like this. This is how synapses should be. They should just give you like, be like, mystery, cool stuff, yeah. murder. It seems neat. It probably sounds just kind of like a, what do you call it? Please don't take a note from uh, from the Dragon Ball, um, you know, thing where they're like. Here's the whole synopsis the, of the episode. Here's the episode. Don't even watch it because we just told you what happens. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, this is another one that I did not ask for, but they sent it to me called The Dark Above. It's already out also. Out. Um, out. I'm turning Canadian, didn't you know? Mm. Um, in the sequel to the critically acclaimed novel that grabbed fans of X-Files and Stranger Things. So apparently it's a sequel. And uh, I need to learn what the se the first book is. For most of his life, William Chance has been living the has been the living proof that his grandmother and her fellow researchers into missing people were right all along about their terror from the stars. Now he's avoiding the limelight and hiding out from everyone, including his family. He knows he can avoid everything except for nightmares, firestorms, disease, and violence. He dreams of it all. When he's suddenly exposed, he finds that the media, government operatives, and renegade true believers are desperate to find him. I wonder if this is like you don't have to read the first one to read this one, because that seems like a pretty self-contained story. Unfortunately, I'll have to look it up because it doesn't stay on here. Next stack. Then I got City of Beasts by Corey Wang. Um, I did not ask for this one either, so let's see what it's about. About the city. About the city of beasts. Yeah. Hold it. <gasps> I almost got triggered. For 17 years, fees have lived separate from beasts. The division of sexes has kept their world peaceful. Glory Rhodes is like most other fees her age. She adores her neighborhood's abandoned Costco, can bench her body weight, and she knew 27 beast counterattack moves by the time she was seven. Um, she's never questioned the separation of the sexes or the rules that keep her post-nuclear hometown safe. I remember reading the synopsis. I feel like the men and the women are separated. The women are fees and the men are beasts. It sounds pretty interesting. Yeah, definitely. A river divides them, a rescue unites them. I'm down to read it. Seems different. Hmm. I've heard pretty good stuff about it. This Hideous Heart. Um, it's by a bunch of authors, I think, and it's edited by Dahlia Adler. Um, oh, yeah, it definitely is. Look at that. Yeah, so it's a bunch of short stories based on the original tales from Poe. Um, 13 of Edgar Allan Poe's Most Unsettling Tales. So I think what makes this unique is um, they the give you... The beating heart. Yeah. They give you Poe's story and they also give you the new story with it. It's basically just a gray cover. It says, Edgar Allan Poe may be 170 years beyond this world, but the themes of his terrifying works live on in modern fiction for young adults. 
With this collection, a host of some of today's most beloved authors come together to reimagine Poe's most terrifying, thrilling tares, tales in new and an unexpected way. Oh, I can't English. Unexpected ways. So you have Kendar Blake. I recognize that. Amanda Lovelace. That's pretty much it. I got Wild Savage Stars, which is the second book in the Sweet Black Waves series. I have not read the first one, so I can't really say much about this one. Is that the one with the girl at the ocean? Yeah. On the cover? It's like a white cover? I'm killing this. Is it the one right there? Yeah. Oh, it's not the ocean. <clears throat> She's like in the grass. Looking at the ocean. Uh, okay. I, I don't really know anything about the first one. I don't want to screw myself over well, while reading this. Well, it's a sequel to this one. And um, we don't really know much about it. And we don't want to spoil it. The cover looks cool. She's, she's like underwater. She's under the ocean. No, she's not. A, a river? Lake? No, those are trees. Oh. She looks like she's underwater. She does. I don't think she is, though. Definitely it looks like she's underwater, especially with like the light coming through the water here. But it looks like look look in there. Yeah. But it's technically not because these are trees. Like there's trees here. It's a dope cover. Maybe they What's it with you and dope lately? It's like my new favorite word. Apparently. I saw this book at Barnes and Noble yesterday. Um, the Last Widow by Karen Slaughter. I have never read anything by Karen Slaughter, but apparently she's pretty well known. Um, because one of my nurses was telling me about her the other day, and I was like, hey, I have a book by her. It was just sent to me randomly. Um, I don't really like that. I book. like it. It's different. It's got the you didn't deckled, even show it. Deckled edges. You didn't even show the cover. Yeah, I did. No, you were like, I, I don't really like it. Look at it. I don't really like it. And you're like, you're like going like this. I don't really like it. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's all right. I don't really like it. Look at it. There's that, and then there's the little like signature right there. That's super cool. And the yellow is like a neon yellow. Look at the, how neon-y that looks. Yeah. Whatever, dude. Dude. What is okay. it about? I don't know. Hmm. I think it's like, hmm. I think it's one of those things where it's like a long series of like mystery thriller type books, but you can start anywhere technically, but it's like been going on for a while. It says a mysterious kidnapping on a heart. heart. On a hot summer night, a scientist from the Centers for Disease Control is grabbed by unknown assailants in a shopping center parking lot. The authorities are desperate to save the doctor who's been vanished into thin air. A devastating explosion and then a diabolical enemy. So it's like a medical... Not my type of book, man. ...stealing person. To... I want to start reading books that are out of my element. I may do a video. Let me know down below if you guys would be interested in seeing a video where like, I read books out of my element. Comfort um, zone. Yeah, comfort zone. Because what is your element? Like fire, water, air? Then I got Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. I did a um, book swap with one of my patrons, and this was one of the books that she sent me, I think. No, it's the other one that's signed. Margaret Rogerson wrote um, An Enchantment of Ravens, which I enjoyed that book. I didn't overly love it. I think I gave it a three. Uh, but I hear that this one's better, so I have higher hopes for it. And, uh, yeah. All sorcerers are evil. Elizabeth has known that for as long as she has known anything. Raised as a foundling in one of the Ostomir's great libraries, she's grown up among the tools of sorcery. Magic grimoires that whisper on the shelves and rattle beneath iron chains. If provoked, they transform into grotesque monsters of ink and leather. She hopes to become a warden charged with protecting the kingdom from their power. I don't want to know anymore. It sounds intriguing. The other book that um, she gave me when we did the book swap is Crown of Feathers by Nikki Pal Pal Prado. Um, this one is signed by the author. This one is pretty well known in the book community. A lot of people have been reading this. I've heard very mixed things about it. Oh, I didn't show the naked part of that one. We both realized. Yes, you did. No. Oh. You have the wrong book. Oh. So this one is just red. You didn't show the cover either. Yeah. <laughs> Slytherin. Very. This one says, 
I had a sister once in a world ruled by fierce warrior queens. A grand empire was built upon the backs of Phoenix riders, legendary warriors who soared through the sky on wings of fire until a war between two sisters ripped it all apart. I promised her the throne would not come between us. All right, something about 16 years later. I don't know. I don't really want to know. Phoenixes are not used enough in fantasy. Maybe you'll like this. I like phoenixes. Okay. I like their tails. Like their stories or their butts? Their butt. Okay. I thought that was obvious. They're birdies. Yeah. Birdies have tails. Then I randomly got this one in the mail, Halfway Home by Hugh Howey. This is the author of Wool, which I hear is really, really good. I've heard from so many people. I have the ebook of it, but I've never read it. But this one sounds pretty intriguing. Um, it says, 500 colonists have been sent across the stars to settle on an alien planet. Bat grown in a dreamlike state, they're educated through simulations by an artificial intelligence and should awaken at 30 years old, fully trained and ready to tame the new world. But 15 years in, an explosion on their vessel kills most of the homesteaders and destroys the majority of their supplies. I, I don't really want to know more. It sounds pretty neat. So it's like they wake up when they're 15. Probably, yeah. Unless they started at 2, then they wake up when they're 17. I don't know what to say. I, it doesn't I don't say when they... I, when, when I, they... I read it, but I don't remember. I read it, but I didn't understand it. <laughs> I have that, I have a bad habit of, like, when I read things out loud, I'm just focusing so much on not screwing up that I don't know what I'm reading. Then how come you screw up so often? I don't know. <laughs> Focus harder. <laughs> I randomly got sent this one, too. Um, it doesn't come out until March of next year. But Holy. It's called Mrs. Moore, Moore Goes Missing. Um... I, that cover's just strange. But Let's I like try it. to understand it. I think it's like a nun, maybe? I don't know. Or oh, it's a yeah. woman in a hat. It's like a woman. And you're in, looking like through her. In a hat, facing away from us, yeah. like this way, this way, away. And then she has like a hat on, but it's like the back of her head, but then they like drew in the, the background. So apparently it says this is a Zofia Terbats. Uh, Terbatsniska mystery. I, I think that's Polish, that name. Marilia. I cannot say that name. Um, cro cro I can't say any of this stuff. Zofia, professor's wife and socialite, is bored at home with little to do but plan a charity auction sponsored by the wealthiest or wealthy res residents of local nursing home and the nuns who work there. So it is a nun. But when one of those residents is found dead, Zofia finds a calling solving crimes. Ridiculed by the police who have declared the deaths of natural cause, she starts her own murder investigation. So, I mean, it doesn't really sound my, like my type of tea normally, but um, if I ever want to get into, like, murder mystery solving books, I have this one. What did you just say? What did I say? I don't know. Not it doesn't. type of tea? Type of tea? Yeah. It's cup, cup of tea. tea. It doesn't sound like my type of tea. I asked for this book. It sounded really cool. Tuesday Mooney Talks to Ghosts by Kate Reculia. Um, this book looks very middle grade, but I hear that it's actually an adult book. You like ghosts. I love ghosts. Anything with ghosts in it. Ooh, it's like very shiny. It's gold. Um, oh, ooh. beautiful. I don't know if they can see that. Can if we show them. It just has like this awesome little like embossed like wavy pattern. Yeah, this is really cool. One of my favorites. Wait, is the is the lettering gold? If the lettering gold, yeah, yeah, that needs to be gold. Hold this. How come you have me hold like every other one? Um, a dying billionaire sends one woman and a cast of dreamers and rivals on a citywide treasure hunt in this irresistible novel. Tuesday Mooney is a loner. She keeps to herself, begrudgingly socializes, and spends much of her time watching old Twin Peaks and X-Files DVDs. But when Vincent Price, Boston's most eccentric billionaire, dies, leaving behind an epic treasure hunt throughout the city, sounds like what's it? Mm-hmm. Ready Player One. Yeah. With clues inspired by his hero, Edgar Allan Poe, this is very Ready Player One. 
Tuesday's real life adventure begins. Puzzle solving Tuesday searches for clue after clue, joined by a ragtag crew. I don't know. It seems Sounds cool. I, I always like um, this right here. I don't know if you guys could read that. Does it say more expensive in Canada? Yeah. It says more in Canada. $26 higher, higher in Canada. It says it there too. Yeah. And the kitty. I like that. This book seems cool. Seems interesting. Then I got Light at the Bottom of the World by London Shaw. This one Shaw. comes out this month in October. And all it says on the back. What? Why is the ocean in the like sky? A, in a futuristic underwater Britain, Leia McQueen must race her submersible to save her father from imprisonment. But in a world where danger lurks, she'll discover a horrible truth that upends everything she ever knew. That's how, that's a synopsis. You know, two sentences. Two sentences. Cover not final. They should keep that cover. It's cool. It's all right. I like it. It seems like a lot of like just like clip art type thing. Like let's get a picture of Big Ben. Let's get a, a whale. Stick it in there. <laughs> let's get some jellyfish. Jello fish? No, jellyfish. <laughs> I said jellyfish. And like here's the thing, right? That jellyfish and that jellyfish are the same exact image, just inverted. And made bigger or smaller. Yeah. So like And that one. That one's the same one too. And these are all the same. No. Nah. <sighs> anyway. Yeah. That's the same as that one. Yeah, so, you know, I understand why they didn't do it. Those are some giant jellyfish, too. Like, if that was the city. Mm -hmm. Some big old jellyfish. Mm, give me back that jellyfish. Da, give da, me da, that da. fish. Then we're finally at a book that I purchased. Hey, you. By uh, The Bulgariad, Volume 1, by David Eddings. Why the hell did you purchase that? That looks terrible. No, I'm so judging it solely by the cover. I read... Pawn of Prophecy recently. Oh, Pawn of Prophecy. The first book in this. Mm -hmm. um, so I, it was actually cheaper for me to buy this bind up of three books than to buy the last two books by themselves. So I just did that. So I have this better. So copy. that has the first one in it. You want to grab the first one? It's on top. There. Oh yeah. I didn't haul this yet. So I got Pawn of Prophecy in this ugly little mass market paperback edition. Um, this is the one I physically read uh, last month? No, two months ago. Um, and I oh, really it's the same picture, it. look. Uh, yeah, over there. I really enjoyed it. Um, it's a very like older written style fantasy and it's very like detail oriented and kind of slower paced. Um, I don't know how to describe it. Basically, there is this um, orb that's all powerful and this god had it and there's a bunch of different types of gods and the orb gets taken and is being protected by this family of people what are you doing why are you making noises there are so many pages in yeah. this and the letters the 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 font is like 10 <laughs> it's like 10 point font well, don't forget, I already read a third but of it. Look at that. That looks like a textbook. This was very dense, That too, too, yeah. But look, they're like the same size font. Yeah. But this is, these pages are much bigger. Yeah. 400, 5, 6, 600, and... Jeez, how many pages? 44. 644 at that ratio. Like... This is I already a, this, read one, though. This is a big book. It doesn't look... But look how heavy it is, too. The, and also, another thing, too, that you can notice. See how flexible it is? Yeah. It's because the pages are thin. Mm -hmm. You know? So, like, look at that. Look at how flexible I that is. I love those, like, floppy paperbacks. The, it's just... That's nuts. This is a big read. This is a big read. So, this was suggested to me by a uh, patron and... Uh, I really enjoyed the first one, so I, I want to actually pick up these pretty soon so I can finish it while the first one's still fresh in my head. Um, I randomly got this sent to me the other day. I think it's out now. Sent to me the other day. Sent to me the other day. <laughs> Chilling Effect by Valerie Valdis. Oh, it's Schrodinger's cat. <laughs> Look. Yeah. He's in the box. Um, Captain Eva something and the crew of less less 
La Serena Negra cruise, uh, the universe delivering small cargo for even smaller profits. When her sister Mary is kidnapped by the Fridge, a shadowy syndicate that holds people hostage in cryostasis, Eva must undergo a series of unpleasant, dangerous missions to pay the ransom. She may lose her mind before she can raise the money. The ship is full of psychic cats and amorous fish. What? I don't even know what this is. Kidnappers, alien emperors, psychic cats, and she's out of coffee. It, it seems like a cute sci-fi fun. Me, I've heard good things about it. Um, it sounds to me very like uh, Hitchhiker's Guide. She's not 17. I don't know how old she is. No, I'm saying. Yeah. It does, like they, They're not stating that she's 17. Forced ageism. Then I got Rules for Vanishing by Kate Alice Marshall. I actually asked for this book. It doesn't come out until March. Can I see them? No, it comes out this uh, this month. Oh, this I is a lie. cool cover, huh? It's got like the ring. <laughs> like, it's weird because it's supposed to, it's not. You could see it more in there that like, yeah. it's a girl. Yeah, that's really nice. Sarah knows the only way to save her sister is to follow the road in the woods. The one that can only appear once a year. The one the rules... Oh, no. The one with rules and secrets it, its travelers must keep. The one Lucy Gallows walked decades ago before she disappeared and became nothing more than a ghost and a legend. Sarah knows that if she steps onto the road, she may not come back. What? This sounds so creepy and fall-esque. Like, I want to read it. That sounds dope. Then I got this silly-looking book sent to me. Uh, Freaky in Fresno by Lori Boyle Crompton. This one... <laughs> that looks so silly. It doesn't come out until February. Hold that, please. Oh my gosh, she's like looking in the mirror. Would you? Yeah. You're Why? looking in the mirror and you're seeing the dog? Yeah, it's like me. Ricky has one goal. Save the Starlight Drive-In Movie Theater from going dark forever. Okay, make that two goals. She already needs a magical first kiss from her cinema rescuing partner and major crush Jake. Uh, she definitely has only one goal. Grow her online makeup channel to keep her... Her momager? Oh, her mom manager off her back, even if her beauty posts do attract an ugly gang of internet trolls. Contemporary book? I... I don't know what to think about it. I will never that. read this book. <laughs> um, just letting you know that now. It don't says, ever suggest it to me. Social themes. I will divorce you if you're ever like, hey, you want to read this with me? I'm going to go. Um, I, I will have to contact my lawyer and get back to you on that. Sometimes. I never. Just, I just, Freaky Friday. Unfreaky Friday. I don't know. My life is contemporary. Who knows? I think this cover is dope. You and this dope, dude. It's uh, Beyond the Shadowed Earth by Joanna Ruth Meyer. This author wrote a book that I liked. E Can Echo I smell it? Echo North. Yep. So I, I had a love, not love relationship with Echo North. I thought the beauting was the beauting. I think it's called the love hate relationship. <laughs> Is it called the love hate relationship? Yeah, you I said have, you said I love not love. Yeah, because I didn't actually hate it at any point. Oh, but some okay. of the magical elements I didn't like in it. Um, however, it was really well written, and I really ended up liking the beginning and the ending. Does it doesn't smell like anything? Hold this. That's why I wanted to smell it. Did I show the cover? I don't remember. Nine years after Ida made a pact with the god of the mountain to rule half the world, her hold on her empire begins to crumble. Betrayed and desperate, she embarks on a harrowing journey to confront the god and take back her power. However, he's trapped at the center of an otherworldly labyrinth, and Ida must fight her way through uh, the circles of death. That sounds so cool. I'm excited. Then, I feel like so blessed to receive this because it's an arc from one of my favorite authors ever about one of my favorite characters ever what is it r.a salvatore it's a oh. dritzed book i just spit um but yeah boundless it's a dritzed novel i just i love dritzed is it this video or before that we talked about him being my book boyfriend but he's my book boyfriend and i love dritz so much and i just i just i need all the dritzed books I don't want to know anything about this book, so I will not be spoiling it. He's not for my myself. he's not my 
book boyfriend. You're not allowed to have him as your book boyfriend because he's mine. My book boyfriend is Karis. <laughs> Cerulean. So was it this video? No, it was, it was the last, last video. Cerulean? I don't remember. I always want to say Cerulean, but that's or a color. Or was it Solaris? Solaris? No, Solaris is Talian Solaris. Solarian. I think it was. Or Solarian. I don't know. Solaris. I need more books. <sighs> What's next? Reverie by Ryan LaSala. What's this? It came with this. I just thought it was cute. Um, so this one comes out in January 2020. It says Inception meets the magicians. Excuse me. You're so gross. All Kane Montgomery knows for certain is that the police found him half dead in the river. He can't remember anything since the accident that robbed him of his memories a few weeks ago, and the world feels different. Reality itself seems different. So when three of his classmates claim to be his friends and the only people who can truly tell him what's going on, he doesn't know what to believe or who he can trust. Um, as he and the others are dragged into unimaginable worlds that materialize out of nowhere, the gym warps into a subterranean temple, a historical home nearby blooms into a Victorian romance rife with scandal and sorceries. sorcery, he realizes that nothing is in his life is an accident. Sounds interesting. I'm down. It sounds really weird. Yeah. I like the cover, though. It is cool. Something about it. It's just, a, just nice, simple, but complex. Uh, so I got this book in a Beacon book box, The Beckoning Shadow by Catherine Blair. It says, Vesper Montgomery can summon your worst fear and turn it into a reality, but she'd rather not. She learned the hard way that it's an addicting and dangerous power, difficult to control and even harder to understand. One wrong move and you could accidentally hurt someone you love. She's better off alone, thank you very much. But then a chance encounter introduces Vesper to the other people like her who have special abilities that separate them from your average baseline human. Vesper? It, yeah. Ooh, ooh, I like that. It's cool. I got this book in... An Illumicrate box, Sanctuary by V.B. James. I just love this spine so freaking much. I just love this whole cover so much. It's like so unique and cool looking. Um, that's signed by the author. To Detective Maggie Knight, the death of Sanctuary's star quarterback seems to be a tragic accident. Then the rumors start. Everyone knows his ex-girlfriend is the daughter of a witch, and she was there when he died. Bereaved mother Abigail will stop at nothing until she has justice for her dead son. Her best friend Sarah will do everything in her power to protect her accused daughter, and the women share a secret that could shatter their lives. It doesn't normally sound like a book that I would read or enjoy, but I love the cover and stuff so much. Is that bad? I'm It's so... UK only. Is it really? Yeah. It says right in here. UK only. So, book depository. <laughs> then I got this on Book Outlet, The Cabin at the End of the World by Paul Tremblay. What? This is a cool cover. I've never seen a cover like that before. Like sideways? Yeah. That is super awesome. So I've, as I mentioned, sort of been wanting to kind of go into areas that I don't really know. or Venture like... into often. Yeah. So this is a, I believe, like thriller type book. And it's got really good reviews, so I decided to pick it up because it was super cheap. Have you ever seen The Cabin in the Woods? No. Surprisingly a good movie. So. Seven-year-old Wen and her parents Eric and Andrew are vacationing at a remote cabin on a quiet lake uh, in northern New Hampshire, a handful of miles from the Canadian border, far removed from the bustle of city life, cut off from the urgent hum of cell phones and from the internet. They are more than two miles away from their closest neighbors in either direction along an old dirt logging road. On a cloudless summer day, as Wen catches grasshoppers in the front yard, a stranger unexpectedly appears. Leonard is the largest man Wen has ever seen, but he's young, 24 and a half years old, and he tells her, and friendly with a warm and wide smile. I don't, I don't want to know. I just think it's like supposed to be like a creepy, like atmospheric novel. I like it. Then, ooh. Ooh. I forgot they, this arc they sent me. Sometimes they're not in the best condition. 
Um, this one comes out in September, The Bone Houses by Emily Lloyd-Jones. Since the death of her parents, 17-year-old Rin, Rin has been scraping together a meager existence as a grave digger in a remote village at the foot of a harsh and deadly mountain range that was once home to the Fae. All right, that's enough. She's 17. The risen corpses are known as bone houses, and legend says that they're the result of a decades-old curse. After Ellis, an apprentice map maker with a mysterious past, arrives in town, the corpses attack with new ferocity. What? That sounds weird and awesome. Uh, I also got this one on Book Outlet uh, during a recent haul, Tess of the Road. I just hear, like, amazing things about this book. Oh, uh, it's cool. It's like a dragon. Yeah, it's like a really cool cover. It says, in the medieval kingdom of Gored, women are expected to be ladies and men are their protectors, and dragons can be whomever they choose. Tess is none of these things. She's different. She speaks out of turn, has wild ideas, and can't seem to keep away from trouble. Then Tess goes too far. What she's done is so disgraceful that she can't even allow herself to think of it. Unfortunately, the past cannot be ignored, and so her family decides that the only path for her is a nunnery. She chooses a different path for herself, yada, 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 rebels. I don't know. I hear such good things about this. I just realized that, like, That's this is like a mountain and, like, buildings and stuff inside of the dragon. Yes. The cover's beautiful. Is this a sequel? Prequel? I don't think so. What is up with this? Those are just different books that she wrote. Oh, okay. They both have dragons. Yeah. She likes dragons. Yeah. This book comes out October. Um, Tarnished Are the Stars by Rosie Thor. A secret beast inside Anna's chest. Beats. My bad. But her mechanical heart isn't all she's hiding. Anna is a technician, an outlaw who provides illegal medical technology to the sick and injured. Her disorder... Uh, a legal or illegal? Illegal. Okay. Her disregard for the commissioner's tyran tyrannical law has left Anna with a warrant on her head. Uh, Nathaniel, her newest patient, has a secret of his own. He is the commissioner's son, and he's determined to prove his worth by capturing the elusive technician. Their game of cat and mouse takes an abrupt turn when Eliza, a skilled assassin and spy, arrives. That sounds like a lot of stuff to go on in this one book. I don't know. What do you think? Mm. You think it's sci-fi? Yeah. She has a metal heart. True. We have mechanical valves and stuff. Yeah, but that's not what they said. They didn't say she has a mechanical valve. She True. says a secret lies inside her. Or whatever it was. Blah, blah. Didn't you get that in the box? No. So I bought this on a book depository. I tried to get one of the ones with the sprayed edges and failed miserably. Um, however, I still like the UK covers better than the uh, US covers. But it's Spell Slinger by Sebastian de Castell. I've heard ran uh, random things, mixed things about this book. Um, it's the first in a series. I'm just looking at that. That's the second book. Do you need I me for something? Oh. Magic is a con game. Kellen is moments away from facing his first mage's duel and the start of four trials that will make him a spellcaster. There's just one problem. His magic is gone. At his 16th, as his 16th birthday approaches, Kellen falls back on his cunning until a daring stranger challenges him to take a different path. Interesting. That actually sounds cool. Excuse me. I like that is that a cover. raggedy cat on his shoulder. That thing like looks like crazy. He looks like he has magic. So this book comes out in October. The Burning Shadow by Jennifer L. Armentrout. This is the sequel to a book that it doesn't say. The Darkest Star. So um, I don't really know much about The Darkest Star. But they sent this to me. It is a huge book. Yeah, it is. It's 650 pages. Oh, my God. I remember Darkest Star was pretty big, too. I have that one as well. Um, yeah, it doesn't say anything. Return to the World of Lux with the steamy, shocking second installment of the Origin series that will leave readers reeling. I don't like descriptions that include steamy. I do. 
I was so excited. You remember when I got this book? I was so excited. Um, they Disney randomly sent this to me. Uh, this book comes out in October, but it's called Conceal Don't Feel. And if you like Frozen, you know that that's a Frozen quote. Um, it's by Jen Cal Calanita. So what is it? I don't know. As the future queen of Arendelle, Princess Elsa leads a life full of expectations and responsibilities, not to mention questions. What type of ruler will she be? When will she have to pick a suitor? And why has she always harbored the feelings that some critical piece of her is missing? Following the unexpected death of her parents, Elsa is forced to answer those questions sooner than she'd hope. Um, so is it just... It's the, like literally like an the movie? origin. Because it says... When mysterious powers begin to reveal themselves, she starts to remember fragments of her childhood that seem to have been erased. Fragments that include a familiar looking girl. Determined to fill the void she's always felt, she must take a harrowing journey across her icy kingdom to undo a terrible curse and find the missing princess of Arendelle. It's like... Oh, I should have read the top. It says, what if Elsa and Anna never knew each other? Oh. <laughs> that explains everything. <laughs> so it's like a... A, a what? It's a what if. It literally is a twisted tale. It's a what so if. So it's like, yeah, I I just love. Does it Frozen say twisted so tale or something? Much. Yeah. Oh. I just love Frozen. I got this dope book, in uh, an Illumicrate box, Birthday by Meredith Russo. I just love this. It's supposed to be the candle. In case you didn't know, hold it. I hear that this book is super cute. Why am I holding it? Because. Me, Eric, and Morgan, born on the same day at the same time in the same place. You've always shared this, or they've always shared this one day together, but as they grow up, they begin to grow apart. Everyone expects Eric to get a football scholarship, but no one knows he's having second thoughts. Former quarterback Morgan feels utterly alone as she wrestles with the difficult choice to live as her true self. I just hear that this is a very, like, cute and well-written, like, friendship story that turns into kind of like a romance. But well, that's a spoiler. No, it's not. I mean, you know that that's going to happen, right? No, I don't. I yeah. didn't know. I was sent this book randomly. I didn't ask for it. The Evil Queen by Gina Showalter. Is it like a mirror mirror on the wall? Yeah. It, it just, like, it looks really cool. Kind of looks corny to me. Shut up. You don't know. That looks boring and normal. It's a big book, though. It's like 500 pages. Welcome to the forest of good and evil, a dream come true, and a living nightmare. Far, far away in the in the realm of Enchantia, creatures of legend still exist. Wait a second. The what? land of Enchantia? Yeah. That's almost as bad as unattainium from Avatar. <laughs> it's, you know, it's this mineral that's very unattainable. I have an idea. Let's call it unattainium. Magic is the norm and fairy tales are real, except fairy tales aren't based on myths. I would have never guessed. Myths and legends. I would from the have past. never guessed. Enchantia. Yeah, is that I get what it, it was called? They are prophecies of the future. Raised in the mortal realm, Everly Morrow has no idea she's a real life fairy tale princess until she manifests an ability to commune with mirrors. Uh, horrifying truth is revealed. She's fated to be Snow White's greatest enemy, the evil queen. Dude, I think this sounds awesome. You're just a hater. This sounds cool. Maybe. I think this cover is pretty awesome. The Gossamer Mage by Julie E. Zernada. Yep, I I'll have to agree with you. The color the color palette's awesome. I got this one. I think I actually requested this one after reading this. Is that white? It's like a cream. Oh, very nice. Gossamer Mage. Only in Tannen do people worship a single deity, the Deathless Goddess. Only in this small forbidden realm are those. Are the I can't. Just go one word at a time, Nick. <gasps> Only in this. this small forbidden realm are there those haunted by words of no language known to woman or man. Good job, bud. The words are her gift, and they summon magic. Mage scribes learn to write her words as intentions, spells to make beasts or plants designed to any purpose. Uh, and if an intention is flawed... What the mage creates is a gossamer, a magical creature as wild and free as it is costly for the mage. It just sounds so unique and cool. Um, so I'm not a big fan of magic systems that involve, like, 
writing spoken and, spells no that's spoken is fine they're talking about you have to write the spell out oh yeah but that's fine what if you don't have paper right on or your arm. ink <laughs> like Just write it in blood exactly like that's one thing if you're writing spells in blood that's cool but if you're if it's just like writing like i think that's one thing that um i didn't like about elantris yeah there was all like the only type of magic that there was in that world was, was like, written, like was written magic dude i love it was it. word Shut magic up. you're wrong i'm just saying i, I just it, it takes away from the excitement of magic imagine that, like I, yeah i guess in real in, in real the real world if you could do magic I would I'd be okay with like written magic if, if I could do magic, but um, it just takes away from like the excitement of the magic. And the trees crept in by Don Kurtagic. So I was just feeling like in a spooky mood, so I picked this up on Book Outlet. I got it for like a few bucks. Whoa, that looks scary. I got this one too. I see it. Um, so it says, stay away from the woods. I heard this book is pretty good. When Scylla and Nori arrive at their aunt's home, it's immediately clear that the manor is cursed. The endless creaking of the house at night and the eerie stillness of the woods surrounding them would be enough of a sign, but there are secrets, too. Questions that Scylla can't ignore. What does it seem, or no, why does it seem that ever since they arrived, the trees have been creeping closer? Who is the beautiful boy who appears from the woods, and who is the tall man with no eyes who Nori plays with in the basement at night? Oh my god! Ah, I hear this book is very creepy and very like atmospheric and very well. Well, that that synopsis is creepy, so I right? am feeling that one. This I, one. I want to read it so bad. The cover looks stupid, but I disagree. That cover looks scary. That <laughs> one looks pretty scary too. The Dead House. Um, I also got this book on Book Outlet, Sea Witch by uh, Sarah Henning. After I bought this, of course, like multiple people on my Discord told me they hated it. <laughs> Uh, and like either DNF'd it or gave it like is it, is it a what's it called one or two stars Little Mermaid type thing I think I hold on no I don't know oh uh, maybe so um everyone knows what happens in the end a mermaid a prince a true love's kiss but before that young siren's tale there were three friends one feared one royal and one already dead Ever since her best best friend Anna drowned, <laughs> her best friend, uh, Evie has been an outcast in her small fishing town, hiding her talents, mourning her loss, drowning in her guilt. When a girl with an uncanny resemblance to Anna appear appears offshore, and though the girl denies it, Evie's con convinced that her best friend actually survived, that her own magic wasn't so powerless after all, and the two girls catch the eyes and hearts of two charming princes. I don't know. I just thought I just love like fairy tale esque stories, and it sounded neat. Um, so I'll give it a try and see if I like it. I think the cover is so cool. All right, I'll let you do this because I can never get it to work. Put, put, put that over there. Okay, good. Yeah. Turn it. <laughs> Are we good? I think so. All right. Turn the light back on. All right. So uh, moving on to the. Next books. We're on this already? I don't even know if I hauled this previously. I may have, so excuse me if you've seen this book before. But I found it and I was like, I don't know if I hauled this. But it's Six Sacred Swords. It is a story about Karis. Um, I believe it's going to be a series because they call this Wh Weapons and Wielders number one. I mean, it's definitely going to be a series. Well, I don't know how it it's, ended. It's you do. short. And, oh, I don't, I haven't finished it. Oh, I thought, that's right. What are you talking about? Um, I was reading it today, though. Me too. I love it. I love it so much. Um, but, okay, so, it's called Six Sacred Swords. It takes a while to collect six sacred swords, unless you find them all in the same place. But then, like, what's the point of that story? You know, like, I ran into six sacred swords. I mean, so far. So cool. I, I, I don't know how far I am into it. I want to say like four a, hours, a hundred, no, a couple hundred pages, um, and or maybe like a hundred and fifty. But anywho, yeah, I've only heard of one sacred sword so far, so I, I can imagine, yeah, it's gonna be a series. Anyway, if you like Karis, he's in sufficiently advanced magic and on the shoulders of titans, and this is about him. You should read the other books first, though, especially. Not especially, but I think you should start 
like really where he starts like i think we should have read his first the series mirrors, first yeah so read the broken mirrors series then read so is um, the third book out already yeah did it just come out yeah, so it's not uh, an audio yet. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Because he is a, a self-published author, so he unfortunately has to put things out separately. So, like, he has Nick Podell, which is the... Um, narrator. Narrator that he likes to use for the audiobooks, and he's good. So he he just has a connection with that um, audiobook narrator, so he always hires him, but he has to go by his schedule. Um, so that being said, the audiobook for the third one's not out yet if you like to listen to them on audio, but the physical book and the ebook are out of the third Broken Mirrors. But anyway, you should read Broken Mirrors, then the Sufficiently Advanced Magic one, which I can't remember what the series is called, and then this. Does it smell good? I then picked up Wondersmith. Uh, but who is this by? Jessica Townsend. So this is the sequel to Nevermore. Um, it is just a really fun middle grade novel. It is very rare that I find a middle grade novel that's written well enough. Not well, that's that's a bad thing to say. Because not to say they're not written well, but like... Written to intrigue you enough as, as an, an adult. adult. I mean, because this is really kind of sophisticated for a middle grade novel. Though I do think middle grade people can... How do I say this? <laughs> middle grade people. people can read it and love it for what it is. I would call them kids kids um but it's definitely you know written in a way where adults can enjoy it as well and i just so i did finish this already i really enjoyed it um and it's just a fun read i also finished it you enjoyed it too i did show the nakey oh yeah i love bow, this bow, bow, bow. Dink, 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 dink. i love that bow, royal blue bow, bow, color oh yeah that's nice and the gold it's classy, baby. There's really only two colors for titles. It's like gold or silver. silver. Those are the two colors. Yeah. They're the fanciest colors, at least. So back in July... So back in July... We were doing the newts. I we were was, doing the newts. Or no, it was August. No, yeah, I think it was August. It Remember was August. you were mad confused about that? Yeah. <laughs> when that it happened. It was August, um, and I found a book, one book, that encompassed every single challenge, and that was The Hitchhiker's Guide. You cheesed Guide. it. To the galaxy. I was busy. I didn't have time it. to read seven books. You spent books. like the time that it would have taken you to, <laughs> s to read seven books trying to figure out that book. Legit, it took me about like three hours. No lie. Um, you could have read a book in that time. I could have. You could have read that book. This one. <laughs> How, so I got this. I really love this edition. It's So there's no dust jacket. This is the actual book. It's I, I just remember books like this in school. Like this is how they had them in school when I you know was in like middle school and high school. Um, and I just really like this cover. Uh, I don't remember what I rated the book. I want to say it was like a three. It was all right. It was a little weird for me. Oh, wait. They can't know everything. Let's see what yeah, you rated I, it. No, I rated it. A three. Oh, yeah, a three. You rated yep, it a okay. three. Anyway, so yeah, I, I got this. The end. Everyone nice. knows about that book. It's a book. <laughs> I got sent this, Deadly Little Scandals, by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. I did not ask for this arc. It comes out in November. Um, it says, think of the white gloves like the Junior League by the way of Skull, skull and Bones. What? What does that even mean? Is that English? Reluctant debutante Sawyer Tapp joins Southern High Society for one reason and one reason alone, to identify and locate her biological father. But the answers Sawyer found during her de debutante year only left her with more questions and one potentially life threat or no life ruining secret. When her cousin Lily ropes her into pledging a mysterious elite and all female secret society called the White Gloves, Sawyer soon discovers that someone in the group's ranks may have the answers she's been searching for. Really, cat? I'm trying to read here. Um, doesn't really sound like my cup of tea per se. But if it sounds interesting to you guys, definitely pick it up. It looks like a pretty fast read, though, because, like, the, the words are pretty big. Me, personally, I never got into, like, any societies or really clubs when I was in school, and I just don't really connect with that type of setting. When I was in high school... Um, I know you can't tell that I'm still not in high school because of my youthfulness. When I was in high school, 
uh, I used to go into school early, and I was a part of the early morning Yu-Gi-Oh dudes. I was part of the Magic the Gathering crew. Crew. Whatever you want to call it. I would call it a crew. Um, yeah. We were all boys, but we didn't actually have a name. I just made that up. I was but, the only girl that played Magic. Yeah, it was, it was pretty good. I, I used to go in like 45 minutes early and uh, get some battles in. You know, mostly win. <laughs> You'd probably lose a bunch. I don't you? remember, to be honest. That I means mean, you probably. lost. That means you lost. Um, if you don't remember, that means you're blocking the memory. But like, from as your brain. anyone that's ever played Magic: The Gathering knows, like the games can last forever. Mm. So we literally would write down like how our cards would be set up and have to like. What about your set decks? Set them up the next day. You just have to reshuffle your deck every time. No, I think we would leave them. I don't remember. This was well. Then don't bring up ago? a story that you don't remember. Then I picked up, I didn't pick this up, it was in a book box, Gideon the Ninth. Um, everyone is raving about this book. I think I've only heard a couple of people say they didn't really like it. Uh, I don't know, I read the synopsis. It doesn't normally seem like my type of book, to be honest. I really I like... remember the synopsis, I don't like it either. What was it? Can no, you I, I just remember not liking it. I remember... Uh... Necromancers in space. There's like sex and stuff and yeah, and uh, that like that forced sexuality thing is just. This is my issue. I don't mind, and I like when there's like, I, not that I like it, but I don't mind when there's sexual stuff in books. That's fine, but when you make it a selling point for the book, that kind of bothers me. I don't care. Like I get it. It's this is a a diverse book, but I almost feel like. That's their selling point, and that's why they want people to buy it, and that's not how I am. Like, I feel like um, that is one of the things I liked about Seven Blades in Black. They didn't make Sal's, like, sexuality a big thing, and they, that had nothing to do with the synopsis. She ended up being a bisexual character, which was fine. It was great. They did it right. This, it's literally like, they're lesbian necromancers in space, and that's, like, what you know about the synopsis. And, like, that's not enough to make me pick up the book and read it. If you give me a synopsis and tell me about the story... Well, I feel like those are, like, red flags um, for, like, saying, like, hey, we're... Just so you guys know, just so you know, this book's diverse. Yeah. And I'll let you know that. And, like, to me, it's, I like... I wish it would just flow naturally. Yeah, just, like, write the book... And Have let, it, it, be let diverse. it be a thing. It's like, we bring this up too often. I know, we do. We really do. Um, but anyway, so... But that's why we're not... We're like, we read that and it's like, it's like the 17-year-old thing. It's like whenever we see that, it's like, oh, why do you have to tell us that you're seven? they're 17? We get it. It's in the young adult or whatever. Like, it's in the young adult category. Or what, is that what it's called? Young adult? Well, yeah. yeah, yeah, young adult. So it's, it's in the young adult category. It's probably about a young adult. I get it. You don't need to like reiterate that every single time that you write a book about a young adult, you know? It's just like, yeah. Harry Potter isn't like, you know, like, oh, young Harry, 14-year-old in this like, book. For an example, I wish that this is all I knew about the book. Uh, Tamsin Gideon, the, Tamsin Muirs, I think is how you say her last name, Gideon the Ninth unveils a solar system of swordplay, cutthroat politics, leave out the lesbian ne ne necromancer part, but then it might... Her characters leap off the page as skillfully animated as arcane, arcane revenants. The result is a heart-pounding epic science fantasy. That's all I need. Tell me it's a heart-pounding epic science fantasy, and that's what I... <laughs> I'm yeah. fine with it. Yeah. I will most likely still read it. I mean, it's not that I'm against it, but that, to me, that doesn't have to be a selling point of the book. I can't. Are you this. okay? What just happened? Wicked Fox by Cat Cho. I read that. Read it and ended up really liking it a lot. Wow. Um, well, it's uh, Asian-y. Well, it's set in Korea and it's about like a girl that is part nine-tailed fox and she has to like kill men to like live, blah, blah, blah. But it was way better than I thought it was going to be. When you read the synopsis, it sounds kind of cheesy. Um, it goes, it, or no. It presents very much like an anime, and if you just like cute kind of relationship type, and it's not even relationship, but it's like friendship-based anime, and like just, I don't know, I really enjoyed it. I thought the writing was really well done. Um, I really liked all the characters. I felt like the story flow was really well done. 
Um, I just really enjoyed my whole time reading it. I thought it was just well done. I need anime that you go like, Chidori! Chidori! <laughs> you know, that's what I need. She that's is a I gumiho, a nine-tailed fox who survives by consuming the energy of men. But she's also half human and has a soft spot for people so she won't kill indiscriminately. Da -da 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 -da. I don't want to tell you too much. I enjoyed it much more than I thought I was going to. The The synopsis does not do this book justice. People were saying that it was really good and I was like, ah. So I just really enjoy anime-esque stories. So like, and I, I don't know if you've ever watched certain animes, like I think you'll know what I mean. Like certain demons and certain creatures show up a lot in animes and it just like, I really enjoy it. Like Oni. Oni, and they weren't in here. But anyway, like, the Nine-Tailed Fox is, like, a huge anime thing that's in a lot of yeah, anime. So like I figured... Naruto. Since this was based around that, I might enjoy it because I tend to like a lot of the characters or types of creatures in anime. And uh, I'm glad I did because I really liked it. And uh, it's also gorgeous. Gorgeous. I don't know why I love this. I just love it. Give it to me. This book has been talked about a lot lately, Red, White, and Royal Blue. It was a good contemporary romance between the son of the president and I think he's a grandson of the uh, Queen of England. So pretty much just... Isn't that like what Harry and what's his face are? Are they the grandsons of the I Queen? I think so, yeah. Hmm. So like, it's... It's a pretty good romance. I mean, it, you go into it knowing that so it's, it's like a Trump romance. Junior and Harry. <laughs> is that what you're telling well, the, me? The president in this is a woman. Okay. But yeah. But I'm just saying, like, it's the equivalent of like that right now. I guess you would say, but he has. Does Trump have a son or does he have a? No, yeah, I think his he name does. is Trump Junior. Is it really? You're just making this up. Yeah, it's like Donald Junior. <laughs> um, Imagine if his first name was Trump. Trump Junior. Trump. <laughs> <laughs> but this is then he wouldn't be a junior. <laughs> no, the the junior is just like like the whole word junior written out oh. like junior. But yeah, so this story the only I, I did read this also. The only um hang up I really had with it is it was pretty heavily involved in the politics and for most romance books that I've read, they kind of graze over that stuff. And, you know, focus mostly on, like, the relationship. This had a pretty good mix between the two. Of, like, the relationship, what's going on, why they have to keep it secret, and the politics of it all. I mean, it really was a pretty good story. If you like contemporary romance, I would definitely pick it up. Alright, I just got this in the mail the other day. It comes out in December. It's called The Dead Girls Club by Damien Angelica Walters. So, I think... It the cover is cool looking. Like, at first I didn't realize that that was like a flower. Or flowers. But yeah. Are you okay? No. How did you... Ah! Just like threw it at me, dude. <laughs> it says, A supernatural thriller for fans of A Head Full of Ghosts. I don't know what that is. About two girls... Or two young girls, a scary story that becomes far too real and the tragic and terrifying consequences that follow one of them into adulthood. That's all I want to know. It sounds so cool. But I'll read a little more. Red lady, red lady, show us your face. Heather Cole and her friends, so this was in 1991, were members of the Dead Girls Club. Obsessed with the macabre, the girls exchanged stories about serial killers and imaginary monsters like the Red Lady, the spirit of a vengeful witch, killed centuries before. Heather knew the stories were, were just that until her best friend Becca began insisting that the red lady was real and she could prove it. Dude, ah, I just love like ghost stories and like creepy-esque stories. And I'm pretty excited for this. It sounds like a good October like Halloween read and I wish I had time to read it, <laughs> but I probably don't. I then got The Last True Poets of the Sea by Julia Drake. I didn't ask for this one. It just kind of showed up one day, I think. I don't know who makes it. Hyperion. Um, just kind of boring. It's bra brass. Bra oh, yeah. Yeah, it's like a copper color. I think that cover's cool. The Larkin family isn't just lucky. They persevere. At least that's what Violet and her younger brother Sam were always told. 
when the lyrics sank off the coast of Maine, their great 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 grandmother didn't drown like the rest of the passengers. No, Fidelia swarm, swam to shore, fell in love, and founded Lyric, Maine, the town of Violet and Sam. Nope. The town Violet and Sam return to every summer. But wrecks seem to ruin in the run. I can't read this, I think, because it's like a yellow. No, I'm having a difficult it's time. It's the font they chose. But Rex seemed to run in the family. Tall, funny, musical Violet can't stop partying with the wrong people. And one beautiful summer day, brilliant, sensitive Sam attempts to take his own life. I don't, I don't know what to think about this. In the beginning, they made it seem kind of mysterious. But then it turned and turned into like a, a contemporary. Like, I don't know. Then they sent me, Tor sent me, uh, this one comes out in January, uh, Come Tumbling Down by Sean and McGuire. This is the next Wayward Children book. Um, and I believe it's about Jack and Jill, once again, or just Jack. I don't want to say too much about it because it's going to, really, so any of these side stories, um, you can technically read, I believe, in any order after you read the original um, Wayward Children book, which is... This is a gigantic door. These are trees. Dang. These are trees down here. What is here. that book? That door is like a skyscraper. So I would definitely say read um, Every Heart of Doorway first, which is the first uh, Wayward Children book. And then after that, you could pretty much read any of these companion novels in any order from what I understand. But this one, you definitely need to read that one first. I highly recommend it. Um, I've read a couple of them, and they're they're really well written. Like she has such a way of giving so much information in such a little book, which is why these are so small. But you really like get a lot out of them. And so far, I've really enjoyed the series. Then I picked up the UK edition of Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. I've had this one for quite a while, pretty much ever since it came out, and I just love this cover so much. And it is much more like epic. Yeah, and than like this one. when you see up close, like there's just so much detail in there and unless you've read the story, you probably won't even understand This has it too. Appreciate it has kind of like detail. that same thing in the sky, but it's a lot yeah. more it's less like dramatic. I don't know. like I just love the artwork of these UK ones and they just announced the cover for the next books. I think it's Star Sight. Um of this series and the UK one once again is very s similar to this one and, and the US one is very similar to that one. I don't hate that cover but I do like this one better so I wanted to add it to my collection. I thought it was like a special edition one or something. No they're just awesome and the oh yeah it has like cool end papers like I don't know if you could see that there you go it's kind of a plain hardcover. It's very stylized too the artwork. I love this cover. There will come a darkness. I like all the people in the top. On the top. In the top. In the top. Is this one out yet? Around I think it is. Around the top. Yep. So um, it came out in September. I don't really know much about this. It says, the age of darkness approaches. Five lives stand in its way. Who will stop it or unleash it? For generations, the seven prophets guided humanity. Using their visions of the future, they ended wars and united nations until the day 100 years ago when the prophets disappeared. All they left behind was one final secret prophecy foretelling an age of darkness and the birth of a new prophet who could be the world's salvation or the cause of its destruction. It doesn't say much. A prince exiled from his kingdom, a ruthless killer known as the Pale Hand, a once faithful leader torn between his duty and his heart, all I know is that I've heard some pretty good things about this book, and I don't think I've heard anything bad about it so far. Um, so this is pretty intriguing to me. Yeah, the people at the top look super cool. I just think, like, the whole aesthetic of the book looks cool. I'm pretty excited to read it. I randomly got this book sent to me, and I did not ask for it. but it's It looks like a contemporary book. It does. Um, don't You Forget About Me by... <sighs> don't you... Mahari McFarlane? Mahari McFarlane. It came out in September. Um, it says, if there's anything worse than being fired from the worst restaurant in town, it's coming home early to find your boyfriend in bed with someone else. 
Jeez. Reeling from the humiliation of a double dumping in one day, Georgina takes the next job that comes her way, bartender in a newly opened pub. There's only one problem. It's run by the guy she fell in love with years ago, and that makes two problems. He doesn't remember her at all. How is that a problem? <laughs> I know, right? That's like a that's a great situation there. She's put, She's been gifted this amazing gift. Like a, a re redo. A, a retry, yeah. Like she reloaded that save point. Like she's good. <laughs> I think, like, it sounds like the type of contemporary where if I'm ever in the mood for one, I'd pick it up. So, like, her, she wouldn't be getting dumped, first of all. She would be doing the dumping. Right, if she um, found. But then it would have been, like, a relief because that was happening. And she figured it out. So that that's a good thing that she figured it out. Yeah, yeah. And then it's an even better thing when she meets the guy that she liked and he doesn't remember her. That's great. Because now she gets to, like, make a new first impression. This, that, that synopsis was wrong. This is a good story. You know what I mean? Like, a happy story. It's not yeah. a disaster. It's like, she got one bad thing. She got fired. And then two great, great things happened. So, these came together. This is Not Even Bones. This one came out, I want to say, last year. And this is the new one. Came out in September. Um, Only Ashes Remain. I've heard pretty so they're good. So, Related? Yeah, so this is number one, number two. Okay. Um, and I've heard pretty good stuff about this series. I haven't read it yet. Okay. Um, you know what would have been cool? If this wasn't a knife, but it was a scalpel cut out. Like, shape. yeah. Because then it would have been like the opposite of that. Yeah. But are they, are they related? Are they like directly, directly related? Yeah, it's a sequel. So this one says, Nita doesn't murder supernatural beings and sell their body parts on the internet. Her mother does that. She just dissects the bodies after they've been acquired until her mom brings home a live specimen and she decides she wants out. Dissecting a scared teenage boy is a step too far. But when she decides to save her mother's victim, she ends up sold in his place. Hmm. I think I... Because she herself isn't exactly human. I think I think you. I remember you reading these synopsis. Yeah. I was well, like, so, this seems pretty cool. Yeah, I have. I've had this book before, um, but I decided to show it again because they sent me this one. And uh, it sounds like something I would like. I need to pick this up at some so point. So that's the first one. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that seems cool. And then this is the sequel to that. <sighs> yeah. I, I have some been smelling every single book. <laughs> <laughs> you want to read this? Maybe. After our Brandon Sanderson. So we're not going to be done with Brandon Sanderson, I think, until January. Yeah, so after that. I got a couple of samplers I decided to bring up here. Samplers. Why? I don't know. So this one came in a beacon book box. It is These Divided Shores coming out. So it's already out in August. So there's that one. I can't grab oh it. You God. keep pulling it away from me. <laughs> this one is uh, The Paper Hearts Society. This one came in one of my Illumicrate boxes. I have no idea when that's coming out because I don't see a date. Um, Maybe it's on the spine. No. Is that? But this one... I know that this is a sequel to something, but Ow. I can't remember the book. Every time. Oh, These Rebel Waves. So this is a sequel to that. This one is not a sequel. To that. It didn't really sound like my type of book, though. It says, Tabby Brown is tired of trying to fit in. She doesn't want to go to parties. In fact, she would much rather snuggle up on the sofa with her favorite book. It's like she hasn't found her people. Then she joins a club that promises to celebrate books. What could go wrong? Everything, especially when making new friends brings out awkward buzzing feelings all over her body. I think the reason that does not appeal to me is because, like, I'm socially awkward enough around regular people, and, like, reading about people having anxiety and being socially awkward is, like, it just makes you get anxious and so Like, I don't like that feeling. I don't know. I randomly also got sent this a little sampler for Rebel by Marie Lou. This one comes out in is October. That a, is that a butterfly? I think so. So, I don't, I have never read anything by Marie Lou, so to be perfectly honest, I don't know if this is like a direct sequel to something. I know that it is somehow continuing an older series of her, but I think, correct me if I'm wrong, um, that you can read this without reading her other series. Um, so yeah, it says, Eden Wing has been living in his brother's shadow for years, even though he's a top student at the Academy of Ross City, Antarctica, and a brilliant inventor, most people know him only as Daniel Wing's little brother. 
A decade ago, Daniel was known as Day, the boy from the streets who led a revolution that saved the Republic of America. But Day no longer is no longer the same young man who was once a national hero. He'd rather hide out from the world and leave his past behind. Da 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 da. Two brothers struggle to accept who they each become since their time in the Republic. I don't know what to think about it. Nate, I don't think it's my cup of coffee, though. You don't like tea, so you're doing coffee? Good job. <laughs> then I picked up... I didn't pick it up. Oh, this looks like anime. Anya... It looks like anime. Anya and the Dragon by Sophia Pasternak. Pasternak? Came out in September, so it is out now. Look at this cover. It is a cool cover. Yeah, it is a cool cover. Look, this is like an airbender or waterbender, like pulling up the water and stuff. Oh, yeah. And there's a dragon. A dragon. A dragon. Whoever destroys a single life has destroyed the entire world. Yeah. Don't stand out. That's what Anya, Anya's babushka, babushka has always told her. Keep to yourself and don't cause trouble. But their family is about to lose their home and Anya isn't about to stand around and do nothing. Her best chance at the Tsar's is the Tsar's henchmen who offer an easy bargain. Money ex in exchange for helping them capture some scary old dragon. What? This is cool. Yeah, right? Wait, no, don't I want to read, read the next sentence. Don't read anymore. You're going to spoil the With book. With magic on their side, she's yeah, pretty sure this is the... There's easy. magic and dragons and babushkas. <laughs> that's all I need. I think I said that wrong. So we need babushka. Babushka. I'm probably saying that completely No, it wrong. sounds right. It sounds right. We Hunt the Flame by Hafsa Faisal. So... Is that the one that you were like, I like the cover? I love this cover. So I bought it. I don't know why. Um, no, it sounds interesting. I was like, I didn't even read the synopsis. I just like the cover of the book. It is a beautiful cover. You're a beautiful cover. And, um, thanks. You're welcome. It's got some, like, swords. Swords and an arrow. You gotta turn it, me. Turn it to the left. There you go. Just a little bit. Slowly. What? There it is. Catch that light. <laughs> um, so I've heard mixed stuff about this book. So I feel like maybe I'll like it if I go in with, like, low expectations. <laughs> But, Would you like me to hold this? Yeah. It says, people lived because she killed. People died because he lived. Uh, Zafira is a hunter disguising herself as a man when she braves the cursed forest of the Ars to feed her people. Nasir is the prince of death at assassinating those foolish enough to defy his autocratic father, uh, the Sultan. If Zafira exposed as a girl, is exposed as a girl, all of her achievements will be rejected. If Nasir plays his compassion, his father will punish him in the most brutal of ways. Uh, they are legends in the kingdom of Ar Ariwia? Ar Ariwia. <laughs> <laughs> That's enough. But neither wants to be. I don't know. It sounds cool. Like a fantasy adventure novel. I'm down for it. I want to read it. So is that a boy or a girl? I think it's a girl. Or wasn't that two boys? One was a girl dressing as a boy. Oh, I zoned out for a second. I picked up this on Book Outlet. The I like that cover. The Sky is Yours by Chandler. That's all I need. Neon Kinds. and dragons. So here's and babushkas. the deal. This book got kind of bad reviews. Like, pretty bad reviews, which makes me upset because the synopsis sounds so cool to me. So I got it anyway because I got it for like $3 on Book Outlet. It says, in the burned out futuristic city of Empire Island, three young people navigate a crumbling metropolis constantly under the threat from a pair of dragons that circle the skies. In this bombshell of a novel, Chandler has imagined an unimaginable world at once far away and disturbingly familiar, its single chaos grounded in the universal realities of love, family, and the deeply human desire to survive at all costs. Like, I just thought that sounded so cool. Like, can you imagine living in a world where, like, there's dragons circling in the skies? Yeah, but are they, like, real dragons? Are they, like, mechanical know. dragons? But even if they're mechanical, that's cool. Uh, all right. I just think it sounds neat. I hope it doesn't let us down. I finally picked up a copy of The Diviners by Liva Bray. Everyone talks about this series. I've heard so many good things about it. I really have not heard many bad things about this series. Um, it says, Do you believe there are ghosts and demons and diviners among us? Yes, please. 
Evie has been exiled from her boring old hometown and is shipped off to the bustling streets of New York City and she's positive, positively ecstatic. It literally has it like dashed. Um, it's 1926 and New York is filled with speakeasies, uh, something, and rakish pickpockets. The only catch is that she has to live with her Uncle Will and his unhealthy obsession with the occult. She worries he'll discover her darkest secret, a supernatural power that has only brought her trouble so far. But when the police call Will to the crime scene of a murdered girl branded with a cryptic symbol, she realizes her gift could catch a serial killer. I just heard like such good stuff about this series. This book came out in August and I feel like I look, everyone... The cover looks like fifth season. <laughs> and like a lot of people have been talking about this book lately. They've, they're saying that it's extremely creepy and has this just like super creepy aesthetic to it. And uh, I've heard mixed things. It's really weird. Like some people really love this story and some people are like, eh. Uh, so I don't know, that kind of makes me sad because I was like really looking forward to reading it. Can you hold this? Why are you falling asleep over there? I'm not, it's just like you put, you hold it here. Like you just expect me to hold yeah. it. Like you're sl I'm your slave. In a manner by the sea, 12 sisters are cursed. Anna Lee lives a sheltered life at High Moor, a manor by the sea, with her sisters and their father and stepmother. Once they were twelve, but loneliness fills the grand halls now that four of the girls' lives have been cut short. Each death was more tragic than the last. The plague, a plummeting fall, a drowning, a slippery plunge, and there are whispers throughout the surrounding villages that the family is cursed by the gods. Disturbed by a series of ghostly visions, Anna Lee becomes increasingly suspicious that the deaths were no accident. Her sisters have been sneaking out every night to attend glittering balls, dancing until dark in silk gowns, yada, yada, yada. I don't know. It doesn't sound like super mysterious except for the ghostly thing. It sounds kind of boring. <laughs> like, you know, except for the ghost thing. I but would... you're probably going to find out that there is no ghost. I hope not. So I randomly got this sent to me. Um, it comes out in November. Well, the sh show them the front. I will. The Andromeda Revolution or Evolution, excuse me. Um, but it's like I, I thought mean, it was. Sh show them the front. This is the front. No, flip it over. That's to show them. No, show them the other side. No, the other the front side. Okay. This is what I originally was showing. Um, you were so confused. Yeah. So, well, it doesn't look like the front, though. It just looks like weird text on a page. Yeah, so this book is apparently a sequel to a book that came out, like, a long time ago. Um, the Andromeda Strain was, like, the original book by Michael Crichton. And it, it just sounds, like, really unique. I really like that their arcs look like this. It's just really, like, cool. Um, this Is it only the arc that looks like that? If, I don't know. It comes out... November. November. This file is classified top secret. Examination by unauthorized persons is a criminal offense punishable by fines and imprisonment of up to 20 years and 250 grand. Do not accept from courier if seal is broken. Blah, blah, blah. Contents compiled by Daniel Wilson. Machine score review below. I don't know what that's supposed to mean. It says, 50 years after the Andromeda strain made Michael Crichton a household name and spawned a new genre of techno-thriller, The Threat Returns and the Andromeda ev re Evolution. So it literally didn't say anything besides that it's a sequel to that. And I, I did look up the original book and it seems interesting. Okay. An evolution is coming. In 1967, an extraterrestrial microbe came crashing to Earth and nearly ended the human race. Accidental exposure to the particle designated the Andromeda strain killed every resident of the town of Piedmont, Arizona, save for an elderly man and an infant boy. Like, this sounds pretty neat. Like, I want to pick up the original. I got a final copy of this book sent to me. Um, I had an ARC randomly sent to me a while back, but it's Cold Storage by David Coep? 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 Um, just kind of... I like the blue. An astonishing debut by the screenwriter of Jurassic Park. When Pentagon bioterror operative Roberto Diaz was sent to investigate a suspected biochemical attack, he found something far worse. A highly mutative, mut mutative organism capable of... Uh, I'm done. 
capable of extinction level destruction. He contained it and buried it in a cold storage deep beneath a little used you know what they called military. It? My farts. Now, after decades of festering in a forgotten sub basement, the specimen has found its way out. 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 Oh, that's Galaxy's Edge. This book cover is so awesome, and too bad. Like, okay. so wait, so this is to do with the the new air, the new place. I think so. So they sent this to me, um, not too long ago. I just oh think, look, it has a real cover so too. Even the regular cover has the cover on it. Cover oh, but it doesn't have the, the the name. They should do that more often. I like it. It is cool. Hold that. Okay. Reunited at the edge of the galaxy, Izzy and Jules were childhood best friends, climbing the spires of Batu, inventing silly games and dreaming of adventures they would share one day. When Izzy's family left abruptly without even a chance to say goodbye. Excuse me, Izzy's life became one of constant motion from one world to the next until her parents were killed and she became a low-level smuggler to make ends meet. Sounds kind of like Ray's story, no? Now, 13 years after she left, Izzy has returned and has been hired to deliver a mysterious parcel and she just wants to finish the job and get done. But upon arrival at Black Spire Outpost, she runs smack into one person who still means something to her after all this time. I... I don't know what to think about the synopsis, but the book is like one of the coolest looking books I've seen in a while. I got this sent to me. It is Rosemary and Rue by Shauna McGuire. So this, Shauna McGuire is the one that writes The Wayward Children. She just wrote Middle Game. Um, this apparently is from 10 years ago and it's like a re-release. I wonder if it has any extra stuff because it says it's a 10th anniversary edition. Oh yeah, featuring an all new novella. I love that crack when you first open a book. This one has copper too. Looks like you were wrong about the gold and silver, mister. What? Gold and silver are the most memorable. They look the best. The world of fairy never disappeared. It merely went into hiding, continuing to exist parallel to our own. Secrecy is the key to fairy survival, but no secret can be kept forever. And when the fae and mortal worlds collide, changelings are born. Outside from birth, Oh no, outsiders from birth, these half-humans, half-fae children spend their lives fighting for the respect of the immortal relations, of their immortal relations. Or in the case of October, Toby Day, rejecting it completely. After getting burned by both sides of her heritage, uh, she denied the fae world, yada yada yada. I, just from this cover, like I would never have guessed that this was about fairies, or like fae. She has pointy ears. How come you notice everything? She has pointy ears. I mean, like, I, would, I didn't notice everything. I just noticed that she has pointy ears. <laughs> if you had pointy ears, I would notice. Would you? Yeah, you would. You're observant. I noticed that your lobes are attached to your head, and mine are not. I didn't not. even know that that was a thing, that you could have detached ear lobes. Yeah, they just fall off. I didn't realize I had two of these. So, yeah, I had an arc of this one. Comes out this month in October. And, uh, yeah, for some reason I thought this was a different book. Because, uh, I'm dumb. Are you sneezing? Anytime he looks up like that, he's sneezing. There was no sun, so I, I couldn't sneeze. <laughs> I was looking for it. I was like, where's the sun? <sighs> my eyes are watery, though. Look at my eyes. Yeah, they are. Uh, this book, good, this book comes out in January. I have no idea what this is about. It was randomly sent to me. Wardens of Eternity by Courtney Moulton. Hold plies. Plies. Did you get my joke? Yes. Ziva has one big memory of her parents from the day they abandoned her on the streets of New York City when she was three. They left her with they left her with that and a promise that she had a great, terrible destiny. Left her with what? They didn't say anything. Oh, a memory. God. Fifteen years later, she discovers that destiny included unbelievable powers. Her magic attracts vicious, otherworldly monsters and eventually compatriots to help her fight them. Sayer and Nasira, known sec no secrets, Ziva doesn't. 
that she is descended from the Egyptian royalty and in possession of ancient magic passed down from the gods. I don't, I don't know how I feel about that one. Seems right. I like that there's magic. That's interesting. But like, there's nothing in that description that made me like, ooh. I need to read it. Ooh. Uh, this one came out in September. The girl the sea gave sea gave back. So this is a companion novel to Sky in the Deep. You don't have to read Sky in the Deep to read this one. Um, they're kind of like, from what I understand, like Viking esque stories. Stories for the first time in generations, the spell are divided. Should they maintain peace or what? go to spell? Spell it. S v e l l. How use would you say? It, use it in a sentence, please. <laughs> Um, should they maintain peace or go to the war to protect their... Sentence, please. The spell are divided. Oh, okay. I said that. Um, when Tova casts the rune stones, she sets into motion a series of events, events that not only will change the landscape of the mainland forever, but will move Tova closer to the one thing she believed she could never have again, a home. Water flows through her veins and vengeance burns in her soul. I feel like this synopsis told me nothing. That's good. That's a sh synapses should not tell you anything. It should just, it should be the hook of the song. That's it. It should be like, baby got back. Boom, the end. That's it. That's all you tell us. Just tell us the hook. And then we're like, yes, because babies do have backs. The Tenth Girl by that looks Sarah beautiful. Faring. Dude, this cover that is That looks cool. beautiful. It I... looks like hair. Yeah, it does. Look at the side. Flip it on the side. Look at that. It just looks like a big thing of hair. It does? I don't see that from the side. Oh, now I do. Yeah, it's weird. It reminds me of, like, the ring. I think it's supposed to be, like, just paint, though. I'm looking, at, looking at it closer. Oh, maybe. Let me see the back. The back? The back. So this book came out in September. Gothic psychological thriller with a haunting twist. At the very southern tip of South America looms an isolated finishing school. Legend has it that the land will curse those who settle there. But for Mavi, a bold Buenos Aires native fleeing from the military regime that took her mother, it offers an escape to a new life as a young teacher to the daughters of Argentina's elite. She tries to embrace the strangeness of the imposing house despite warnings not to roam around at night, threats from an enigmatic young man, and rumors of mysterious others. But someone important is missing, and when students and teachers alike begin to behave as if possessed, the forces haunting this unholy cliff will no longer be ignored. Enough. That is cool. Sounds scary. I'm down. Just the cover reminds me of Haunting on Hill House. And, right? Uh, they're making a sequel to that. Yeah. And uh, another haunty house book. Oh, look at that. The Dead House by yeah, Dawn. Just houses. Just like put a house in the in the title of something or on the cover. Dawn Kurt Automatically Tadjik. creepy. That house is really cool looking too. Like you don't even notice the house at first, you just notice the creepy chick. Three students dead and one banished without a trace. What's up with these students and dying and being creepy? School. So man. this is by the author that wrote And the Trees Crept In. I think we talked about that earlier. Um, two decades have passed since an inferno claimed... Wait, do we have that book too? Yeah, we talked about it. That's the one where like, the trees seemingly like come closer to the house. Goosebumps. Two decades have passed since the inferno claimed the lives of three teenagers and caused Carly Johnson to disappear. The main suspect, Caitlin, the girl of nowhere. Uh, Caitlin's diary, discovered in the ruins of Elmbridge High, reveals the thoughts of a disturbed mind. But many claim Caitlin doesn't exist, and in a way she doesn't because she's the alter ego of Carly Johnson. I just love creepy stories. Oh. Oh, it's got like weird. It's like the best way to show you guys this. It's like pages, like pulled out of stuff. Dude, I love unique like setups to books like this. Staples, we got staples in there and stuff. Or wait, paper clips. <laughs> I always get the two confused. It's like bagel, bagels and muffins, right? No, not They're at all. They're very confusing, and and sometimes my poor little brain can't <laughs> figure them out. I'm like, can I get a muff? Bagel, a bagel. Can I get a bagel? I think you're the only person with that issue. And then I'm like, could you uh, paper clip this? I mean, staple, staple it. <laughs> it just, I want it st like the one that goes like this. 
That's a paper clip. This is a monster of a book. It's like 600 pages. But I got The Grace of Kings by Ken Liu. Liu? Liu? Liu. Liu. Uh, I've just heard some pretty good things about this. It has Kai Vox's favorite cover. You notice? I did notice, Mick. I did. He hates this. Um, the meaning of justice changes in a revolution. The archipelago of Dara was once divided into seven kingdoms with shifting alliances and constant battles, a tempest of diverse dialects and cultures. When a relentless king united the seven lands into one empire, some thought it would bring peace and end the turmoil. Instead, it brought stagnation and suffering, the anger of the gods, and finally a rebellion. Kuni is a wily, a wily bandit who is more concerned about being well-liked than with the affairs of the Empire until he meets his match, Gia. This free-spirited daughter of a well-regarded family sees greatness within Kuni. Driven by Gia's love and touched by the grace of the common people, she sets out on an unlikely path of heroism and perhaps a daring wager against the gods. I hear that this is a really cool and well-written adult fantasy. And this this is a what's it called right? A what arc? A arc? No. I'm gonna rip this page off. I'm no, don't rip, rip it off. It I'm rip it off. I got this on Book Outlet, so it was cheap. Does that make it any better? No. Um. How many how many dollars per page? That's that's how I rate my books, value wise. <laughs> oh my god! It's per page. Cents per page. Excuse me. At least. So rude. This also was on book outlet. Oh, it's glittery. The Princess and the Fangirl, a Geekerella fairy tale. Uh, I have no idea if you need to read Geekerella first. I'm guessing you probably should. Um, never mind. This is a sequel. The word Geekerella. That's the other book I have over there. The word Geekerella. I'm just not feeling that word. Uh, My eye this, just twitched. This book My eye legit just, it just went, I'm not feeling that. I have the first one. It seems pretty cute. I hear it's a cute, like, contemporary type novel. Um, and this one was like three bucks on Book Outlet, so I decided to get it. But what, what what phone is that? Is that like an iPhone four? I don't know. It's like an iPhone OG. That's like an iPhone three G. This is a cool cover. How old is this book? It just came out. Oh, jeez. I like the glitter, though. Glitter bug. Oh, look, she has Ray's thing. She has a elven. Yeah, they whatever. go to like cosplay conventions or something. Oh, it's one of those. There's a kitty that's like Oswin. It's like, pay attention to me. Why is it on the red carpet? Blue carpet. No idea. Oh, because I think someone famous is involved. I don't know. You're famous. I wish. Me no, too. I don't. I randomly got this sent to me the other day. Aurora Blazing by Jesse <clears throat> Mahalik. Aurora. What about Aurora Rising? This is a sequel, I believe. To Aurora Rising? No. Oh. To a book that I got last year sent to me randomly. Unfortunately, I haven't read it. Would you say that this is a sequel to not Aurora Rising? Yeah. Um, I don't even remember the name of the first book. It doesn't say it. It does. It's right there. Whatever trilogy. Well, it says the Consortium Rebellion trilogy, but it doesn't say the name of the first book. Anywho, when they say a novel, it usually means... Does it not usually <gasps> mean... It is. Oh, yeah. Polaris Rising. You remember that cover? Oh, yeah, because Aurora, Aurora is a... Uh, right there. Is a Is a system, right? I don't know. To save her brother and protect her family's future, a powerful princess must join forces with a dashing man from her past in this thrilling space adventure. But is it an opera? I don't know. Space operas. I've been really intrigued by this book. Jesus. It is enormous. Jesus Christ. And, uh... Hold on. I just got goosebumps. Oh my god, you get goosebumps so This easily. is a scary cover. <laughs> it scared me. I was like, did you see my face? I went, oh. it's just creepy. The shape of that little boy. 
He just looks like a boy. Yeah, but he's he's silhouetted. Yeah. You can't give me little boy silhouettes. They creep me out. <laughs> so, imaginary friend. I've been like kind of eyeing this book for a while. I can't believe how big this book is. It's like Could you explain to me what kind of eyeing means? Like one looking like with one eye. For it to come out. It's 700 pages. And I'm kind of sad because this has very mixed reviews. What's up with you and kind of? I don't know. Oh, wait. Did we show this? Yeah, I did. Oh, yeah, you did. What does this one look like? Black. Boring. And white? Silver. No white. White. This is the author that wrote um, The Perks of Being a Wallflower, which is kind of just like a contemporary book, so I don't know what this is going to be like. Christopher is seven years old. He's a new kid in town, and he has an imaginary friend. Single mother Kate Reese is on the run, determined to improve life for herself and her son, Christopher. She flees an abusive relationship in the middle of the night with her child. Together, they find themselves drawn to the tight-knit community of Mill Grove, Pennsylvania. It's as far off the beaten track as they can get. Just one highway and one highway out. Oh, one highway in and out. At first, it seems like the perfect place to finally settle down, and then Christopher vanishes. For six long days, no one can find him until he emerges from the woods at the edge of town, unharmed but not unchanged. He returns with a voice in his head only he can hear, with a mission only he can complete. Build a treehouse in the woods by Christmas, or his mother and everyone in the town will never be the same again. Creepy. 632 pages. Yeah, why are the pages all yellow? Because it's an old book. Not really. I got it off a book outlet. I feel like it's been it was sitting somewhere because the top is all yellow. It's white around here. <laughs> it's probably just like legit been sitting at book outlet for a while. <sighs> um, what's it called? River of Stars by Guy Gabriel K. I now own like three of his books and I haven't read any of them like an idiot. <sighs> I can't read it. Ren was just a boy when he took the lives of seven men while guarding an imperial magistrate of Kitai. The moment changed his life forever, steering him on a dramatic course that will lead him towards the capital at a time when war approaches from the north. Lin, or Lin is the daughter of a scholar, his beloved only child. Educated as if she'd been a son, she finds herself living a life suspended between two worlds. But when her father's life is endangered by the savage, savage politics of the day, Shan must act in ways no woman ever has. And at the heart of this divided empire sits an exquisitely cultured emperor who loves his gardens and his art for more than the burdens of governing. That doesn't tell anything. Weaves a dazzling tale of lives destined to intertwine amidst the turbulent backdrop of an empire in decline. Sounds like a very political... This sounds like, why'd you buy this? Fantasy. I don't know. It sounds super boring. <laughs> it was like two bucks. That's not a reason to buy something. Ah, it was cheap. And the cover looked cool. Looks very, like, Japanese. I, no, this isn't supposed to be here. <laughs> <laughs> I read that. The Beholder by... The Beholder? Anna Bright. This was... In like, the, like the Beholder? I don't get it. Like from D&D? &D? Oh, I don't know. This is, um... It was in one of my book boxes. I can't. What are you doing? I'm trying uh, to show the naked. How come none of these things besides a Galaxy's Edge one are like interesting? I feel like we lied at the beginning of the video where we said everything was gold and silver. We've had one gold <laughs> this whole time. You did that. You said, I went gold and you went and silver with me at the same freaking time. Rewind the tapes. Rewind tapes. the tapes. What year is this? Rewind the tapes. As the only daughter of the Sen Seneschal Chical. of Potomac, she knows her duty is to find the perfect match, a partner who will help secure the future of her people. Now that day has finally come. But when the night of Sela's engagement ends in excruciatingly public rejection, her stepmother proposes the unthinkable. Sela must set sail across the Atlantic where a series of potential suitors awaits. And if she doesn't come home engaged, she shouldn't come home at all. Oh, engaged. I I don't know. I remember Sounds boring. thinking that this sounded kind of boring. However... The cover is beautiful. So many people love this book, so I don't know. Dude. Look at that cover. It's beautiful. I found a pencil in my trunk and put a single 
tick mark on the top left corner of the page above the illuminated start of the story. Mark 1, day 1, once upon a time I was lost out here on the ocean, but somehow I'd found a map. That sounds more intriguing. Is I don't get it. Is that the synopsis? No, I think it's just like a little... Blurb. Is that what she did? I think so. Uh, okay. <laughs> Rewrite the stars. Why, were you singing that? Yeah. What is it from? The Greatest Showman. Oh... Uh, this time will be different by Misa Sug Sugiura. So that is about a uh, Japanese American family. Japanese American family owning a flower shop. You remember a lot. And um, the, there's a girl, and she's gonna eventually take over for the no, family. They were gonna sell the flower shop. They were gonna sell. I just started going off by myself. Katsuyama's never quit, but 17-year-old CJ doesn't even know how to Turn get it started. Off. Turn it off. They said that they 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 said the word. We don't have to read any further. That's all we need to know. Da, 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 da. 17 year old. So the mom is announcing that she's planning to sell the shop to the McAllisters, same people that swindled CJ's family and many others out of their property when the Japanese Americans were sent to in internment camps during World War II. I I don't know. This came in an Illumicrate box. I like the cover and the colors. Yeah, I don't usually like yellow, very, but it matches. Very vibrant. It's a it's a neon yellow too. It's not like Yellow. Yeah. It's like neon. That's not supposed to be here either. Then I got Soul of the Sword. Two what? copies. Oh. Because this is the UK one and it's beautiful. So you bought both of these? Yeah. You son of a... What is this from? This is the sequel to no. Shadow of the Fox. No! Why? Why did I let you buy two of these? I probably didn't tell you. I was probably yeah, like, you probably didn't. I was probably like, hey, I'm buying two books, and you're like, okay. Yeah, you should not buy two of the same books, especially when the first one sucked so much. I love that I gave that it like a book. two or something. I gave that book like a four and a half. It was terrible. A four and a half is not enough to buy two copies of it. It's a very like Japanese-esque. Like it's like fantasy. it's like corny Japanese. It is like it's like Inuyasha tropey, meets Inuyasha like Naruto meets Naruto meets every other action feudal Japan Japanese j j anime. It's trash. I loved it. I just, just watch an anime. It's better. Watch Full Metal Alchemist. You'll like it more. I just went into it like knowing what it was, and I just thoroughly enjoyed it. I had fun reading it the entire time. I thought it was just it just. Gave me all the anime feels, and I love it. Do you even remember what happened? Where, like, all the friends, and it was just like, anime friends. Has everybody be friends? Yeah, you we have, meet, like... We meet another guy. Oh, now the he's... The cranky, like, Now he's our friend. That joins them. Everybody and has their role in the party. I Dip -a -dip -a -dip -a -dip. love it. You guys, if the synopsis sounds good to you, you should read it, because I loved it. It wasn't the worst, but I don't like Look how gorgeous this cover is. I love it's it. A freaking circle. It's a freaking red circle. I love it. It's got like No, 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 no. Move on. It's He's so cranky. It is not gorgeous. This one is much nicer. Two piles left. I got this romancy novel sent to me for free and I didn't ask for it, but you know, it's a romance for when you're in the mood for romance. I feel like they all look like that. They all look the same, like legit. I, I got two copies of one, and I didn't even realize I did. You were like, oh, yeah, this is another romance. And you're like, oh, wait, it's the same I hear one. this author, though, is pretty good at yeah, romance stuff. romance, yeah. I, romance is worse than contemporary. They call him the Duke of Ruin. Wealthy and ruthless, Gabriel <laughs> they Duke... They call him the... That's just stupid. That's clawed stupid his thing. way from the lowliest slums to the pinnacle of high society. And oh, now, wow, not cliche at all. And now he wants to get even. Dude, you have to go into romances knowing that they're super cliche. Or, you know, or the other option, close the damn door on, on romance and just never open it again. Throw all of those books into a room and burn down that room. Sometimes I like romance. I'm just, I just get in the mood for them sometimes and Don't I know just why. pick them up. Don't know why. Loyal and passionate Lady Penelope Campion never met a lost or wounded creature she couldn't take into her home and oh, her heart. She's like, she's like Snow White. That's cute. And let me guess. That's them. Probably. Why not? Dude, 
when you read romance, you know what's going to happen. The then same why thing happens all the read time. it? Because it's cute. N if you know what's going to happen, then why read it? Because sometimes you're just in the mood for a cute love story. No, Jeez. that's never happened before. Well, it does I've never me. been in the mood for a cute or an ugly love story. Here is a like James Bondish looking like love story. Uh, Sapphire Flames. This is terrible. This is terrible. In a world where magic is the key to power and wealth, Catalina is a prime. Is a prime. Apparently that's a thing. Yeah, the like, highest, like the numbers. The highest rank of magic user and the head of her house. Catalina oh. has always been afraid to use her unique powers, but when her friend's mother and sister are murdered, she risks her reputation and safety to unravel the mystery. Safety, so this, safety or safety? Safety. Mm. So this seems at least like it's more of a, a story... Probably with heavy romance influences. So not the stereotypical romance. Does it say that it's a romance? Wait, what does it say at the top? It says number look one. Look at this. It's a New romance. York number one. Best-selling author. Oh, author. Okay. It's totally a romance. <gasps> I feel like there's a lot of New York best-selling authors out there. Is that even possible? I don't Shouldn't know. Shouldn't there only be one if they're the best? No, probably if they ever got like on the list. Because there's different... List. So there's a list of the best. Like however many books are sold. That's they considered they the have best like selling. A list for romance, a list for this, a list for that, uh, and like if they get on that list, they uh, are okay. a best selling. So author. it's it's not a best selling. It's like most selling author. It's best selling. Like they sold. They are they mm. they sell. I guess a lot. the word the like the description for that just to me just seems like deceiving. I guess I could see that. Because it. I I was thinking like like best like on a list of the best authors. Oh no. But it's it's not. I guess it's best selling author. It's just like they have the word best and author in there, and that's the only two that I was paying attention to. Best author <laughs> list. <laughs> that's it. So we were at BJ's one day. We were. And I found this super awesome copy mm. of The Three Musketeers. It's got glitter. It's got some awesomeness. It's like a, a fake leather. Oh, there was a sticker on it. It's like fake leather. It's just like a really it's super... It's one of those like thick, flexible yeah. pages, like covers. And it's like a really pretty edition like of the book. Like the pages are... Oh, Oops, sorry. Every time. <laughs> the pages are super nice. And... You know, it's a classic, and it's one that I've always wanted to read, even though it's a bajillion pages, 625 It's one of the pages. ones that, you know, you, you always want to read, but you know you're probably not gonna, so you go and buy yourself a really cool copy of it. I, That's I, our meek, guys. Kiki. Here you go. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> I love how you just don't defend yourself at all. You're just like, yeah, pretty much. Then I got this sent to me, uh, The Harp of Kings by Juliet Marillier. This just came out in September. I've heard some pretty good things about it so far. Um, oh, now we have an 18-year-old. That's a change. Oh, an adult. 18-year-old Leo Bon is a powerful singer and an expert whistle player. Play the whistle. All whistle right. player? What? Wait, what? That's what it says. Whistle player play maybe whistles like a, a sport her brother has a voice to melt the hardest heart and is a rare talent on the harp the Leab Leabon's burning ambition is to join the elite warrior band on swan island she and her brother train there to compete for places on the force and find themselves joining a mission where still while still candidates their unusual blend of skills make them ideal for this particular job which requires going undercover as traveling minute minute Minstrels? I can't Music people. talk. I I don't know how I feel about this. Their mission is to find and retrieve a precious harp, an ancient symbol of kingship. I st I'm still confused about the whistle player. Apparently, like, some music in, is like a form of magic in this, it seems. Ma magic music? Hmm. I, it's intriguing just because it's different. I like the cover. I don't like his, how he has a... Uh... I thought that was a chip. I don't like how he has a sting. Is that what it's called? Dagger. 
Sting? No, Sting doesn't look like that. Sting has like a fatter, like, pointy part. What? A fatter, pointy part. What does that mean? Sting the sword? Yeah. It's like shaped different. See, it has like a fat part there. Oh, it has like a, yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. You're right. Um, tip. Yeah, pointy part. <laughs> this book came out in August. <laughs> pointy part. It's the sequel to Grim Lovelies. I've heard some mixed stuff about Grim Lovelies. I still want to read it. It sounds like a cool premise to me. I can't really tell you much about this because I haven't read the first one and I don't want to spoil myself for the second one, so I don't want to read the synopsis. But, like I said, I've heard some pretty decent stuff about this series as a whole. I'm just judging the cover. I like it. So we can't really talk about it, right? Yeah, not really, unfortunately. Grim I Lovelies! I got this sent to me in a book box, Dark of the West by Joanna Hathaway. I feel like I may have hauled this already. Mm. Don't remember. Well. We're hauling it again. Who knows? I had it on my need to haul shelf. Aurelia something is a princess of a small kingdom in the north raised in privilege but shielded from politics as her brother prepares to step up to the throne halfway around the world Athan, the youngest son of a ruthless general is a fighter pilot longing for a life away from the front lines when arthan's mother or a Athan's, excuse me mother is shot and killed his father's convinced it's the work of his old rival the queen of vitania aurelia's mother Determined to avenge his wife's murder, devises a plot, blah, blah, blah. Heart pounding. I hear this is good, though. Yeah. Made I see it? things. Who? That's, Who? That, that's the author of Children of Time. I really like this cover. It's the author from the, the Children of Time book. I you know that don't book? understand... If it's real or not. No, it's not. It's a painting or something. Look at that, though. Look how real that looks. Yeah, but I don't think it is. Did I show it? Yeah, but it may be like a CG image, you know? They may just be CG. I can't believe... So when does this come out? November 5th. So this isn't quite out yet. Coming soon, though. Welcome to Fountain's Parish, a cesspit of trade and crime where ambition curls up to die and desperation grows on its cobbled streets like mold on weak old bread. Capellia is a street thief, a trickster, a low-level con artist, but she has something other thieves don't, a tiny puppet-like companion, no, multiple companions, some made of wood, some made of metal. They don't entirely trust her, and she doesn't entirely understand them, but their partnership almost, or no, mostly works. After a surprising discovery shakes their world to the core, Capellia and her friends must re-examine everything they thought they knew about their world. It just sounds intriguing. It just sounds, yeah, it sounds cute. Making friends has never been so important. Fix Her Up by Tessa Bailey. I've seen this on a few... Yo, he's uh, huge. ...channels. Oh, yeah, she has to be, like, on a ladder. Well, so is he, though. That's weird. Why is he standing on a ladder? Man. That freak. Romantic comedy perfection. Georgette Castle's family runs the best home renovation business in town, but she picked balloons instead of blueprints, and no one has taken her seriously since. Frankly, she's over it. Georgia loves planning children's birthday parties and making people laugh, just not at her own expense. She's determined to fix herself up into a woman of the world, whatever that means. So, it's like a self-rediscovery or it's discovery like, uh, slash... It's like she's uh, fixing herself up or... Romance. And it's a comedy... And I will never read this. <laughs> Probably not. No, I, I am, I am uh, vowing to you right now. I vow on my honor that I will never read this. Wilder Girls. Beautiful cover, beautiful cover. Beautiful by artwork. Rory Power. Came out in July. Unfortunately, I've heard pretty bad things about this. Oh, that's sad. Which makes me sad because I was I was really excited to read it. And maybe now that my expectations are lower, I'll go into it knowing that some people don't like it and it won't disappoint me. Can you hold that where I can read it? Face ID. Oh. 
It's been 18 months since the Raxter School for Girls was put under quarantine. Since the tax hit and put Hetty's life out, pulled Hetty's life out from under her. It started slow. First, the teachers died one by one. Then it began to infect the students, turning their bodies strange and foreign. Now, cut off from the rest of the world and left to fend for themselves on their island home, the girls don't dare wander outside of the school's fence where the tox has made the woods wild and dangerous. I just, it sounds cool. Sounds interesting. Like, I don't know why people don't like it. Um, I'll still give it a shot because to me it sounds cool. This one comes out October 15th, so soon. Uh, Ormish Shadow by Priya Sharma. I, I don't know. I don't really overly like this cover, to be honest. It reminds me of, like, Oprah. I don't know why. Because of the O, me. It's yeah, because it's of like, the giant O. A lot of Oprah books like look like this, too. Like, the ones she picks. Acclaimed author... Oprah. Uh, uh, da, da, da. <laughs> <laughs> Priya... Transports readers back in time, a coming-of-age story as dark and rich as good soil. Burning with resentment and intrigue, this fantastical family drama invites readers to dig up the secrets of the Bellman family and wonder whether myths and legends are real enough to answer for a history of sin. Uprooted from Bath by his father's failure, Gideon Bellman finds himself stranded on Orm Shadow Farm, an ancient land of chalk and Did ash. Did that really say from Bath? Yeah. yeah, his uncle's land. I don't. I don't know. Like I don't it sounds even know like what it, that means. I, you read that whole thing. I yeah. got. I got confused. I mean, about ten percent in. It's only a hundred and sixty pages. I would probably give it a shot. It sounds pretty good. No, you won't. Don't lie to yourself. When, when I'm retired and old, especially when you're retarded and old. Retired and oh. old, and I have time to read. This book is enormous. This was sent to me randomly, um, but it seems pretty neat. Uh, <sighs> There's a piece of paper in there, Meek. Yuck. 647, 8, 9, 50 pages. Wow, 447, 8, 9 pages. A million pages. You're not even, like, showing that. You're, like, keeping that over there in it's the corner. It's boring. Um, what does the back say? Nothing. What does the back say? Beep, 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 beep. Does it? A sword named Truth. Mine just goes... Long dormant magical forces are moving once again in somewhere. Agents of Norse Sunder, a mysterious bastion of incredible dark power, have reappeared in the world, amassing resources and sowing instability. But with numerous nations led by young rulers brought too early to their thrones, the world is hardly ready to defend itself. Aitan is still uncomfortable with her new queenship, gained after her country was freed from a Norsundrian enchantment that left it frozen outside for a century. What's wrong with you? I don't, I don't, I don't understand any of that. That's it sounds I, like a very political fantasy. That's how I know like, I don't want to read a book, because it's just like, when you read the synopsis, if I get lost... <gasps> oh my gosh. What? Look at this. They are connected. There's a circle on this one, and there's a circle on that one, and then there's a water and a shore and a mountainside. There's a water and a shore and a mountainside. Oprah's trying to take over. That's it. That's what I. That's what happened, and that's what it happened. I didn't even tell you the name of this one. A sword named Truth by Sherwood Smith. This says the complexity and depth and inventiveness that uh, mark a first-rate fantasy novel. That was Orson Scott Card, the guy that wrote Ender's Game. Everything you want from a fantasy series and an interesting, fully developed world with several languages. Yeah, a lot of worlds have several languages, don't they? This is book one. This is such a big book. Anyway. I got this book in an Illumicrate box, and I am obsessed with this cover and the spine. Or, I mean, the pages. I just think this cover is so cool and gorgeous and just life. I don't know. I wouldn't go that far. Silver. Yay! We did it, guys. See, I told you that, like, they're all either silver or gold. 20 years ago, the humans came for their gods. In the bloody revolution, gods were all but wiped out. Ever since, the children they left behind have been imprisoned in an orphanage, watched day and night by the ruthless guard. 
Any who show signs of divine power vanish from their beds in the night, all knowledge of their existence denied. No one has ever escaped the orphanage until now. Hmm. Sounds cool. And I think it's, like, gorgeous. Do you think it deserves, like, the door creaking noise, though? Hmm. I got a sampler of this randomly. Uh, the Red Scrolls of Magic. I think it came in I my... I think you have two samplers. Yeah, I do. That. In my Illuminate box. I got a sampler of the binding, which I own the physical copy of this, like the the final copy, I mean. The Furies by Kate, Katie Lowe, an excerpt. Why do they make books like this? I love how that looks. It just like looks like a little mini book. Yeah. Is that a full book? Yeah. It is? No, it's a sample. Then why'd you say, yeah, you fooled I'm me? Lying. This is, it's still like six, 70 pages. It's pretty, I don't know what this is like. Can I see what is it like? What's it about? Uh, it says obsession witchcraft murder How there you go that's best synopsis that's it if you like obsession witchcraft and murder this is the book for you this is what it's called that's it that's all they keep it simple that stupid you know creeped me out kiss like, right what I mean kiss? kiss keep it simple got it got stupid it. Stupid. Keep it simple. Stupid. I got this in a book box Sherwood by Megan Spoon. Ah, that is a let me guess retelling of Ooh. Robin Hood, but with a female Robin. Yeah, I believe so. Robin of Loxley is dead. Maid Marian doesn't know how she'll go on, but the people of Loxley Town, persecuted by the Sheriff of Nottingham, need a protector. And the dreadful guy of uh, something, the Sheriff's right hand, wishes to step into Robin's shoes. Da 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 da. I think that's kind of cool, though. It's like not really Robin Hood, but it's like when he dies, what happens? Or if or he maybe were to die. if he were to die. I have a question though. Like, who's gonna stand in? The. Well, it says, and the dreadful guy of Gisborne, the sheriff's right hand, wishes to step in. Oh, as the Lord of Loxley and Marion's fiance. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Who's to stop them? Marion never meant to tread in Robin's footsteps, never intended to stand as a beacon of hope. So Marion's the one that becomes Robin. That's cool. Then. I guess. I mean, I, I, I like what-if stories. If it's a what-if, then that's cool. But if it was, like, a girl Robin... Just, like, yeah. Yeah, like, like oh, she's a girl instead of a guy. I think this makes more sense, you know? Yeah. That so it's her, cool. like like... But I, I I would like to understand like how she's if she is gonna be an archer still, how is she gonna be like as talented as as he was because he's know. like god god tier you know. I'm running out of space here, Meek. We're almost done with this pile. Okay. Oh look, it's my oh, other, look, the other sampler. But that one's bigger. Yeah. That's a you bigger know what I love? Oh, I remember why I wanted to show these, because both of these say exclusive sneak peek. Literally both of them, and they're the exact same thing. And they came in two separate book boxes, yep. and we opened them up on the same day. Yep. But they literally both say the exact same thing. Like, stars spell your name is the first chapter. Is that what that says? Yeah. So, not really exclusive. And what's the last word? There's a bunch of pages in the back for me. Oh, last word? Yeah. Of the story. R. R. R for me too. <laughs> Romanov by Navy Brands. Oh. I've, I've heard some uh, mixed reviews on this lately. I literally heard one review where someone was like, oh my God, I love this book. And then another one was like, oh my God, I hate this book. So. 50 50. I don't know. It sounded pretty intriguing to me. Like, uh. Gold. Like, yeah, baby. And Anastasia retelling. Oh, I thought it was about Black Widow, baby. The history books say I died. They don't know the half of it. Anastasia Romanov was given a single mission to smuggle an ancient spell into her suitcase on the way to exile in Siberia. How do you, how do you spell? Siberia. How do I spell? No, how do you, like, how do uh, I spell? smuggle a spell? What do you mean? You don't have phones, so you can't just say it over like the phone and be like, yo, this is the spell. So you got to like write, write it, it down. down or memorize it, and then you bring it over the border. It might be her family's only salvation, but the leader of the Bolshevik army is after them, and he's hunted Romanov before. Hmm. I don't know. It sounds neat to me. I'm down for it. I'll give it a try. My hair hurts. 
How? How? Your hair doesn't have feeling. Um, you mean your scalp? Can you feel my hair? I can feel it, but you can't feel it. <laughs> I just felt it. I got this book sent to me randomly the other day. Little Universes by Heather Demetrios. Comes out... This book does not come out until April. Demetrios. That sounds like a spell. Demetrios! <laughs> One wave, that's all it takes for the rest of May and Hannah's lives to change. Change! When a tsunami strikes the island their parents are vacationing on in Malaysia, it soon speaks... Soons. I sound like I'm talking uh, like Letterkenny guy where he adds S's to everything. Just slow down. When a tsunami strikes the island... Their did, you, did you say tsunami? Yeah, it's a Japanese word. Do you say tsunami? Tsunami. Why? Because that's how it's spelled with a T. Yeah, but it's pronounced tsunami. It's pronounced... How do you pronounce knife? Tsunami. How do you pronounce night? It's a Japanese word. I don't care. That's how you say it. We're not Japanese, and you're not speaking Japanese. I wish I was. All right? It's like when people say... Regate. Regat. Mezzalone. Uh, Ostelugi. I did do do. You know what I'm saying? Okay, does this make you feel better when a tsunami. 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 It sounds like you're like about to sneeze or call. Tsunami. Tsunami. Strikes the island their parents are vacationing on in Malaysia as soon as. Soons. I did it again! <laughs> what is wrong with me? Becomes clear to the sisters that their parents are never coming home. Ours days? Ours days. Are they coming home? I don't know. Forced hmm. to move to Boston from their sunny California home for the rest of senior year, each girl struggles with secrets their parents' death has brought to light with the uncertainty about the future. Instead of bringing them closer, it feels like the wave has torn them apart. Bond of sisters, kinds of love that never died, da 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 da. It's I don't a contemporary. Knows. I don't know. I feel like I wouldn't. You don't want to like this. Nah. It's not a you book. I'll give it a shot. Mm, it's not a used book either. All I'm saying's. In the Shadow of the Sun by, I don't know if that's supposed to be E M or M, Castell Castellan. Uh, this one comes out February 2020. <laughs> her magic can save the kingdom. Will it also bring her love? It's 1661, and magicians uh, thrill nobles with enchanting illusions. Exiled in France, 17-year-old. Henriette of England wishes she could use her magic to gain entry at court. It would ensure, ensure her future and make everyone forget her connection with her infamous father, the English king, executed for treason during the Civil War. But with a chronic illness consuming her lungs, performing spells that reshape reality could prove fatal. Da 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 da. Why? I'm, I'm sick of the trope. Just gonna put it out there. I'm sick of the trope of like balls and. and parties and fancy dresses and I'm just I'm just sick of it I'm just sick that was the next part by the way that I didn't read about balls and fancy parties and dresses the magic part seems cool like I can appreciate that so you must really hate like Frozen I love Frozen mm, weird um but it has like weird glue what I want to know what's a ballroom with no balls. I When I first heard that, I did not think it meant <laughs> what it meant. This arc. This hmm. arc is the heaviest arc wow. I've ever received in my life. Wow. It is so heavy. I wish we could weigh it. We can. Mm. I love that there's dragon and hoops together. So we have a problem. By Jean Yang. This little scale can only go so... Heavy. Okay. No. 52 grams? No, 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 no. It's it's over. Because watch, if I lift it up a little bit. Oh, I see, I see. Like. See? Yeah, yeah. It's heavy. So this book here is 300, 320 grams. This book. I broke it is at least double that because I think this only goes up to like 500 yeah 
Yeah, it's going up to 500 like randomly and then stopping. Well, it just it goes past it and then yeah. it, and then it freaks out. It doesn't actually read the. So, I don't know what this is about, but it's a comic book about basketball. Are you gonna read it? I don't get this. So. What, what's confusing me about it is the the author's name is Jean, correct? So it says, the back says, ugh, this comes out in March, by the way. This says, Jean understands stories, comic book stories in particular. Big action, bigger thrills, and the hero always wins. But Jean doesn't get sports. As a kid, his friend called him Stick, and every basketball game he played ended in pain. <laughs> he lost interest in basketball long ago, but at the high school where he now teaches, it's all anyone can talk about. The men's varsity team, the Dragons, is having a phenomenal season that's been decades in the making. Making, Each victory brings them closer to their ultimate goal, the California state champ. I I just don't get why, like how... It's championship, by the way. I know. But like he is in this, but he's the author. Once Gene gets to know all these young all stars he realizes that their story is just as thrilling as anything he's seen on a comic book page i feel like this is almost like an autobiography-esque type thing no it's about the kids in school yeah weird it's... oh whoa, whoa did i just see like some D? &D? oh nope just old people <laughs> It's unique, I'll give it well, that. Listen, listen, though, listen. Regular book. This book. Big difference. It's heavy. He literally scared the dog. Poor puppy, you poor puppy. I don't think this is a sequel. So it's called Defy the Sun by Jessica Fleck. I guess, uh, same author that did Beware the Night. But it doesn't say that this is a sequel. I like this cover, though. But, um... Yeah, it just says praise for Beware the Night. Mm. Civil War has come to the island of Bologna. Vita believes in the night. She joined the underground revolutionaries led by Dorian Winters, and they're determined to overthrow the ruling Imperi to find justice for her people. Nico, Vita's childhood friend and maybe something more, is one of those ruling Imperi. Uh, and he's just been named heir to the most powerful man above ground. As war intensifies, they're leveraged against each other. Da, 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 da. I don't know. I don't feel like that tells me very much. But um, it's so shiny. This one comes out in March. These are all part of like a box that got sent to me. And they all come out like next year. Lucky Caller by Emma Mills. So this looks like a contemporary romance to me. Comes out in January. When Nina decides to take a radio broadcasting class her senior year, she expects it to be a walk in the park. Instead, it's a complete disaster. The members of Nina's haphazardly formed radio team have approximately nothing in common. And to maximize the awkwardness, her group includes Jamie, a childhood friend she's hoping she's hoped to basically avoid for the rest of her life. The show is a mess. Internet rumors threaten to bring the wrath of two fandoms down on their heads. And to top it all off, her family is on the brink of some major upheaval. It's contemporary. Your favorite, Meek. I know. I already read it. It's so great. Is it good? Uh, no. This one also comes out January. Finding Mr. Better Than You. I like that name. And it's got, it's like a maze with like hearts and some of the hearts are crossed out. Uh, if her ex can find someone new, then so she, so can she. Cameron has it all planned out. A perfect senior year with her friends. Then it's off to, to Columbia with her boyfriend, Mark. But the first week of school, everything falls apart. Not only does she not have enough extracurriculars for her dream school, but her relationship crashes when Mark publicly dumps her. With the step... I know. With the help of her two best friends, Cam is determined to get her life back on track. Blah, blah, blah. This cover, though, this one comes out in April. The Silence of Bones by June Her. Dude, look at that cool cover. It's so creepy. 
Um, in a land where silence and obedience are valued above all else, curiosity can be deadly. So it's set in 1800 Korea. Homesick and orphaned, 16-year-old soul is living out an ancient curse. May you live in interesting times. Okay. Indentured into the police bureau, she's been tasked with assisting a well-respected young inspector in the politically charged investigation of the murder of a noble woman. As they delve deeper into the dead woman's secrets, soul forms an unlikely bond of friendship with the inspector, but her loyalty is tested when he becomes the prime suspect. This cover does not scream that to me. This screams like ghost story, like... Why? I don't know. It just It's just does. the face. But it's a creepy face. No, that's mean to whoever's face that is. No, I mean, I mean, it just like gives it like a creepy vibe. The way it's like the coloring and like the um, the style. I don't know. This one comes out in February. Ink in the blood. This one actually came with um some cool tattoos. I left them downstairs though. By Kim Smigal. I don't know. I've been seeing this book um, around here and there. A lush, dark YA fantasy debut that weaves together tattoo magic, faith, and eccentric theater in a world where lies are currency and ink is a weapon. Um, using magic, they tattoo followers with beautiful images that represent the divine's will and guide the actions of their recipients. It's considered a noble calling... But ten years into their servitude, uh, they know the truth. Da, 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 da. I, that just sounds unique and weird. But I'm down to give it a try. What about you? No? Not, in, not unique enough. Then I got Capturing the Devil. Uh, yeah, you like that one, huh? Well, I don't. I haven't read it yet, but you I like, like the series. The series. This is the. Fourth and final book in Stalking Jack the Ripper series. I still have to read it. It's set in Chicago during the uh, World Fair, where I guess murders start happening. And where um, they first sold, like, cotton candy. Cotton candy. Like, I don't, are you sure about that? Yeah, I looked it up after I said that, <laughs> just to make sure that I was correct. Um, but it wasn't, like, invented there, but that's, like, where it was, in like, America. released type okay. thing. And then it, like, became popular afterward and... Uh, but that's like where like you know it kind of started like because it's like it, it, something can't be invented it at the fair you know what I mean yeah but that's like where yeah. it was like first sold this di like whatever it was a dentist and like a, somebody else that made like invented it really a dentist yeah, that's yeah. so and like ironic it was called fairy floss yeah yeah I that's like the original name for it apparently that's still what they call it in England Australia as well uh, I don't know about England but Australia La, 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 la. He once said the devil was within him and stayed all his wicked life. I really hope that they mention the candy, the cotton, cotton candy, candy in the some candy way. Floss. I, I will be very disappointed if they don't. Audrey Rose and Thomas have arrived in America, a bold, brash land bursting with life. But like their beloved London, the city of Chicago has dark secrets. When the two attend the spectacular World's Fair, they uncover a sickening truth. The once-in-a-lifetime event is tainted with reports of missing people and unsolved murders. I don't know why. Some people don't really like this series, but I enjoy it thoroughly. So far, like, I think I've rated every book, like, a four stars. Um, I think my favorite is still the second book because it has, like, vampire-esque stuff in it and, like, vampire lore. And they're in Dracula's castle. Um, but, yeah. Not as bad as Strahd's castle, but <laughs> still pretty cool. I just can't wait to finish that series. This novella came in my Illumicrate Dark Dawn edition. That's just disgusting. So uh, I, I did a little research, and apparently this is uh, chapter 35 rewritten in a way where... Oh, it's not even canon? Well, no, because... So what Jay Kristoff did is he used to get all these requests for three specific characters to have... I love scene. ...sexual stuff happen between them, and... He couldn't make it work in the book. And he wanted to, I guess, satisfy his fans. That's so he stupid. created it and gave it as a pre-order incentive. And I guess some of these book boxes gave it out in the book box because, I mean, technically they pre-ordered it. 
um, and they gave you a printed copy of it. I have not read it because, to be honest, I don't like one of the characters at all, and I don't really care to read it. But I did look into it, and it starts at chapter 35. So it's a, it's chapter 35 is rewritten, essentially, to include that scene. Um, so that doesn't I would, make any sense. If it didn't fit in the book, then why would he rewrite it to make it fit? He said that he tried originally to make it work, but it just didn't flow like properly. So he then took you it out and he put it in. It. It, it, he didn't put it in. But he did. By writing that and releasing it, that means it's in. Not really. Yes, it does. Because he says this isn't really canon. It's just. Well, then th there's no point to read it then for if it's the not fans. canon. There's no point to read it if it's not canon. Stop that's getting so a, that's angry. Like, that's like fan fiction, basically, at this point. Right? I guess. It's fan fiction written by the author. Which is not canon, so what's the point of reading it? Because people wanted it. That's they so asked dumb. for That's it. That's so dumb. That just annoys me. <laughs> I'm, I'm legit perturbed right now. I say if you want to read it, read it. I say um, it's terrible. Then I got Kingdom of Souls by Rena Barron. This came in Illuminate. Wait, wait, wait. Let's, let's just pump the brakes here. Just uh, pick. When you're reading this, I want you to picture Jay Kristoff. Sitting there, thinking of all of this and writing it. Maybe that's a good thing for you. Maybe you'll like that. But that's just weird. And that's what I hate about romance and stuff like that in books. Because I can picture I just don't think that about guy that. writing it. And it's just super weird. Like um, Game of Thrones. Yep. I'm going to just leave it at that. <laughs> Anyway, Kingdom of Souls. I really didn't have my eye on this book. Um, this is the UK cover. It came in the Illumicrate box for September, I think. Show them the thing. Show them the thing. Look how cool that is. It's a snake. But it's like super neat. It's a snake. Um, I just love the way that like this is super like foily and shiny and pretty. And I just think this is a gorgeous cover. I really don't like the US cover of this book. Um... And I don't know, for some reason, like, I saw the word witch doctor, and I was like, eh. Like, I don't really normally go to, like, any sort of witchy stories, no matter who it is, what it is. Like, it's not my go-to, but I'm trying to broaden myself and, like, read stuff that I wouldn't normally read. But this actually sounds really good. So, it says, Born to a family of powerful witch doctors, Ara yearns for magic of her own, but she fails at bone magic, fails to see the future, and fa fails to call upon the ancestors. With each passing year, her ambitious mother looks on her with ever-growing disapproval. But there's one thing she hasn't tried. It is possible to trade years from your own life for a taste of power, a cheap trick with a heavy price, for you cannot know how much time each ritual will take. This is something Ara would never stoop to until the city's children start to disappear. I mean, it has more, but I love this orange. Gold! I just love everything about this cover. I hope it's good. I hear literally nothing but good things about this book, so... Yeah. We were at Barnes & Noble the other day. Mm. And I found this Code of the Samurai book. Um, but you have no idea what it's about. It's like, you know, talking about samurai and, like, their traditions and stuff like that. The only reason you bought it. One of the main reasons I bought it is because it has uncut pages, which makes me really excited. Imagine if you cut the pages and there's nothing on the inside. There isn't anything. What? No. So they're not true uncut pages. So I don't think you're supposed to cut that then. You're not. You're not. Then why, why didn't you check this when we were at the store? <laughs> we literally bought this for no reason. So, like... You were like, I'm so excited, I get to cut these, and then you're not going to cut them. So, I don't know if you know, I would never cut them anyway. But back in the day, when they bound books... It's just easier, because you can print it all on one long piece of paper. Yeah, they would do that, and fold it up, and bind the book, but you would have to cut the edges yourself. I think it was usually, like, the top edge and the side edge, um, in order to read the book. And, uh, which would... I think when they started doing it by machine originally that's how you got like that deckled edge which um nowadays is considered very like fancy 
but back in the day, this deckled edge was actually considered like the cheap way to do it. Um, but anyway, I was super excited because like, I love, you know, stories with samurai and I was like, all right, that's awesome. And the fact that the pages are like, when did you figure this out? Not cut. The other day when I was looking through it, I was like, oh, they're did empty. Did you figure it out the other day? The other day. I would read this, though. Would you, though? The Soul of Japan. It looks like a textbook. Yeah, it's... it's. Are you sure you'd read this the other day? Mm, show them the, the side, though. That That's awesome. I love that. So this is the, the actual paper. This is paper, and then they has the tie through it, and that's how it's bound. It is a really neat book. Is it actually is it actually glued though? No, it's not. Yeah, it is. It's glued on the inside behind that. Yeah, probably. It's a cool it's a very cool cover. Jeez, could you not smash that book on I the dog's saw head? Me. Oh my gosh, she almost died. She's like a heater. She's so hot right now. I'm like sweating. Is that Harry dressed as a girl? <laughs> This shit looks like Harry Potter dressed as a girl. Um, so I randomly got... I can't not see Harry in those eyes. I randomly got this sent to me one day, um, the other day. by Disney. It's It says Charlotte Bronte before Jane Eyre. Um, and it's a comic... Featuring Harry Potter. He's talking about the one in the middle. Look at that. It's freaking Harry, guys. But... Oh, that's neat. Oh, that's cute. It's like... Um, it's a cover. A room. Yeah, there you go. I've never read Jane Eyre. I do have it, and I want to read it because I hear it's really good, and it's supposed to be like a ghost story, and I love ghost stories. Like her most famous creation, Charlotte Bronte rose from humble origins. The third of six children born to a clergyman and his wife, she grew up exploring the moors of rural England before being sent to an oppressive boarding school. Amid devastating family tragedy, long hours of unfulfilling work, and few models of success, and few models of successful female authors, Charlotte received little encouragement to pursue her literary ambitions. I think this is literally just a comic about her life. It's a comic. Yeah. You didn't say that. Yes, I did. <laughs> but it's literally a comic book. Hmm. It's pretty neat. Almost done. We're almost done, me. Look at this mountain of books. Aurora Rising and Aurora Rising. Two different colors. Look at this. And this one has a protective plastic. Yeah, it's it. like it's almost like a library, library book, book feel. Yeah. Wait, is, but it's like a separate. Look at this yeah. one's pink and that one's purple. Yeah, they should do this more often. Right? Why don't they do this? That's these are. I think that's a UK one. That's that's maroon, ish. Pur purpley maroonish. Even I the love stars, how like the the stars are different though too, and um, the stars are like the background's different. I can't remember if these are both UK editions or what. Was this like a new thing? Because I feel like you read this like a year ago. I read the arc, I think. Oh. All right. So, open this like this. Okay. So that's a different color. Yes. It's purple and then what does yours look like the same yeah i think the the this it's is it's like rainbowy like, that's so weird it's in it plastic. is in a plastic thing yes it's in like a little plastic sleeve Dude. the sleeve is in the plastic sleeve which is great because it protects the sleeve from scratches especially in shipping because a lot of companies don't think about that mm -hmm. they just shove these in a giant box with a a, a bubble not a bubble wrap, just a bubble. They just put a bubble, they blow a bubble of soap inside the box and then throw the thing on top of it, pops the bubble, and then the book comes in damaged. 90% of our books that we buy come in like that. So I read this, um, it came out in May, so it's, it's been a while, pretty much a ton of people have read it by now. It was all right, I think I gave it like a three or a 3.5. But you had to buy the special edition one. Love you. I don't get, like, what, if you buy so many special editions, doesn't that make them not special anymore? No, they're special. No, they're really not, though. Like Then I got, you know, just a few copies of Dark Dawn. And you didn't even like it. I did like it. No, you didn't. I liked it. I hold this. So this one was the Illumicrate edition. 
Which edition was this? It says it right in the cover. Goldsboro? Right there. Signed by the author. That doesn't tell me. Aren't they all signed by the author? Yeah. Oh, but this one's signed in the front. So yeah, that one has a bit of a different in there piece. cover. There's a kitty. A kitty frat. Is it the same this? Oh, look at that. Yeah, it's got a kitty. That's the same. That, but it, the, the his is on the inside too. I can't remember if it was. It wasn't Goldsboro. This is the um, the other store that I can't think of. Edition. Wellsboro. No. <laughs> and then this is just the. Uh, I like that cover better. I like that cover better. The U.S. edition. Way this better. is the one that I read, so it's. It came in a little damaged anyway, but. I like that cover better, dude. Dude. I don't like that part so much. But what you should do is you take this cover, put it that cover, and then make the best Boom. cover. I read this already. Um, I I think I'm going to do a spoiler review. Because there are very specific things that I didn't love about it. Um, I felt it was a little slow to get into. Um, there are some characters that I just really don't like that are a pretty main part of the story. And I got a little upset by the ending. Not upset like the thousands of videos that you see on Twitter and Instagram of people bawling their eyes out while reading it. No. And like, I think that's the other thing that kind of upset me is that I'm a baby and I cry over everything and I didn't even cry. Uh, so yeah, it was good. Um, not as good as I was expecting, unfortunately. So we have to do the giveaway. Is that what that is? This is the book we are giving away. Um, it's an ARC copy. I know this is out already, but you will get an ARC copy of it. We will post on the screen who won it. And all you have to do is respond to our email that we're going to send you with your information, your shipping information, and we'll send it out to you. Yep. So I'll send you an email soon. Um, and then just, like he said, respond and we'll get it out to you. Our next book that we're going to be giving away... Um, this book comes out in November. So what we're going to try to do is come out with a book haul every month, which we will do giveaways for. Um, I mean, this one's coming out early October, so this one will probably be early November. This book comes out in November, but my next giveaway is going to be uh, Girls of Storm and Shadow, but it's the ARC edition. And, uh, yeah. So, how do you win this? There's a link down below. Um, follow that link. There's multiple ways to enter. But then also, we need you to leave a comment down below saying the word. By the way, I was supposed to haul this book. This is part of the haul. <laughs> oh, that's the haul. What is it about? <laughs> this is uh, the sequel to Girls of Paper and Fire. I've heard nothing but good things about that. Um, I have not read it yet. But this is a sequel to it. The word is witch. Write a comment, include the word witch. Like witchy hat like, witch. <laughs> yeah. Witch. But yeah, look down below in the description. You'll find out how to enter to win an ARC copy of this. Whoever won this other one, middle game, don't forget to you know check your emails and respond. And I think we're finally done. We did it! Yay! I think that's officially the biggest haul. It literally is. On YouTube. It took us two tries. Or not two tries, but two sittings. Uh, what was the biggest haul you've ever seen? This one. Thank you very much. Let's not do this again. Let's not do this again. Uh, it was... Well, we've been recording for like... Hours. Well, we started at like 7. Mm -hmm. It's it's 9.30. For tonight, you guys noticed that there was a split between the videos so we recorded for like an hour and a half the other day yeah oh, this is so much footage for me meek why do you do this to me it's I gonna take me you. like a week to edit this thank you guys for watching i hope you guys enjoyed if you guys want to support the channel uh go check out the patreon we do have a specific like book stuff there's different tiers that you get different stuff like early access to some videos if you're a certain tier everybody gets access to the uh to the discord uh, including the book chat thing in there and we some other buddy stuff. Reads, book so chat. we do a bunch of stuff. And uh, if you guys have any ideas for other book videos that you want to see, leave them down below. Included in your, uh, if you, if I mean, if you stayed this far, congratulations. Also, let me know if you've read any of these books or if you want to read any of these books. I always like hearing people's opinions. This was like, um, I think this is 
possibly going to be the longest video we've ever put out. I think T is going to be very excited. She loves mm. our book haul movies, as she calls I them. I think <laughs> Coffee is going to be, like, super happy, too. Coffee? Oh. I'm done. Let's go. Say bye, Meek. Bye, Meek. Bye-bye-bye. <laughs>